it's my first like. my first is uh chess boxing by Wu Tang and that's also my karaoke song. You wanna see some funny shit? Watch me rap chess boxing. I kinda wanna pull it up real quick. Bro, I'ma give it to you with no trivia. We're like cocaine straight from Bolivia. <laughs> my hip hop will rock the shop a nation. I do your emancipation proclamation. We MCs bones for bring the dead. <laughs> Bong and bang your head. <laughs> Let's go. Dude. Can can that be the intro to the episode? Zaya, this set the microphone be. on fire. And something tells me this is not his first gangbang. He can no, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Last one was all your mothers. Boom. Hey, I'm Marcus. I'm Matrix. And I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, December 15th, 2022, and you can find this 180 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. And that even means rubble.com. You can also find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Just search for the Working Class Nerds podcast or go to youtube.com slash MarcusB814. Click on playlists, click on Working Class Nerds, and boom, every episode past and present right at your fingertips. And you can watch me play video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sunday nights at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. You can watch me play video games every single Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash NickBurn51. And you can watch me continue the Monday Night Vibes at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash A underscore Atrex. Wow. You can find us all on the social medias. Just search Marcus B814. Atrex underscore A. And I'm at Nick Vern. That's NAC Gave You And in this week's episode, we're talking with a man of many, many talents. To say he's a Twitch streamer completely does not do him justice. He puts on a show every single stream and makes music as well. Welcome to the show, Stone Dog Entertainment. And what have you been up to? What's up? What the heck is up, guys? I don't know if I can cuss. So I'm going to say heck. You sure yeah. can. Let her rip. What the fuck's going on, boys? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Had a little difficulty at first because it's totally, totally fucking fine. things, but we're here. So thanks for having me, guys. And I'm, we, I'm doing great. Things are I, great. I would say the worst part about content creation is audio. Oh, always. Yep. Like I remember the one of the first times I was streaming, I couldn't figure out why Streamlabs had no sound. Yeah, everything else worked. I could hear the game. I could hear everything. Streamlabs would not have sound in the settings in under desktop. It was like set to like ABC to get all these crazy numbers and letters, which means nothing to me. Mm-hmm. Right. But then I clicked it and just put desktop, def- audio. desktop audio. Boom. It worked. Everything works. fine. I was yeah. like, wow. Only if life could be that easy. Right. So Stone Dog, what? have you been up to in game or in life over the course of the last week or so uh the last week i've been playing uh call of duty modern warfare 2 like every other jabroni on the face of the planet very Uh, nice i was bitching about it and making fun of all my friends who were like i got the game and i was like yeah you and every bro and then i tried it and i'm like okay well um this is kind of cool and then <laughs> they gave me shoot house which is some old map that i love from 13 years ago like one thing i love about yes games yes that i'm finding now as i get older that i don't think anybody else has done is like i have friends that passed away like a best friend of mine pat he, i'm not gonna say but he fucking passed away okay like five years ago yeah and uh just gonna want to bring everybody down but um we played this map shoot house and i don't i don't know if anybody knows what i'm talking about but shoot house is one I do. of the limited maps they had and i think it's still on if you do custom games but anyway uh the reason i really got into the game is because i played that map for probably four hours the first time i played it because that's something that me and pat used to play all the time i mean we loved it so it was just like it just made you feel all cozy and comfy and like i i just think that we're one of the we're the first like generations to experience this in a game you know it's like you yep. before back in you know decades ago maybe they would play pool or shoot basketball or you know they threw darts or go get some beers with their friends now it's like 
10, 12 years ago, we were doing this. So it's just cool to have those moments. And that's why I kind of got sucked into it. Sorry to fucking go on a rant there, but yeah. No way. No, this is the awesome. Sidebars are entirely encouraged. <laughs> you know, I, I have the same memory, but it wasn't of like the early days of Call of Duty. It was when they introduced Nuketown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my friends and I playing Nuketown over and over and like you would get the random maps. But when you got Nuketown, you're like, fuck, yeah, I'm leveling up tonight, baby. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Because you're like, no matter even if you're the worst player ever, you're definitely getting 10 kills. Oh, once yeah. You, once you get used <laughs> yeah. to it. And Nuketown, was, was cool I bought Cold War because Nuketown was in it. And I'm, I'm not a Call of Duty guy. That's the other thing. Like, I'm I have consistently bitched about these games because I, I dude, I'm 38. So I've played back in the day. I mean, whenever they first came out and you got these kids saying how cool this game was. I'm like, yes, they, it is. But it was also cool 13 years ago, my friend, you know. Right. So, yep. but they won me over with it. They did a really good job. And other than that, I fucking uh, – I'm my wrestling shows doing great right now. It seems to be bringing in more people and I just launched a Patreon this week and I have seven patrons already, which I, that was one of those things where I didn't know if it was going to fall on his face or what. And the whole reason I had to do it was long story short, my wife lost her job at 12 years. So oh, it man. was like, we had a plan where after the next couple of years, she was going to get a hundred grand payout from a sell of a company. She was a part of this big thing and all wow. of a sudden that's gone. So she and I were in a position where I didn't know if I was going to be able to continue and everybody fucking showed up, you know, uh, and really made a big fucking difference and Patreon's rocking so far. So, uh, it looks like I'm going to be able to continue making content, which is fucking incredible because I really thought that December might be it. And I didn't straight up say that, but it was looking like that and it's really completely turned around and this momentum's crazy. So things are going really good. I got a fire. I feel it. Hell yeah, man. Well, I feel too is I think I'm going to use Twitch as an example. Twitch is a is a viewer based creation, right? Like YouTube is a views based uh, website. Watch time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like podcasts are all about downloads not subscriptions like you can subscribe to the podcast, but we don't get that analytic, right? It's all about how many people have listened to your podcast, like the downloads of it. Yeah. And so for, for you to be growing, that's a great thing. But I think the hard part too is with growth is measuring your growth, right? Like if you're getting one new follower per stream, is that growth? Sure. Yeah. You're growing. You're getting one new follower per stream. But then like you ask yourself, is that enough growth? Are you, is it worth the time investment? You know what I mean? And the Patreon thing, I've been talking about that with Nick for years. And the hardest part is, and the reason why I'm asking this is, you know, do you do extra content for your Patreon or is it just a straight up base? Hey, give me, you know, if you support the show, support the show for $2 a month or whatever it is, you just are supporting me. So that's, it's a really good question. And actually I do want to, I mean, I won't go off on a tangent, but like my heart with this whole thing is like fucking when I started streaming, it was a complete accident. I fucking, I, I thought that the commentary in video games for wrestling matches was fucking horrible. I sat around for years and in my own free time, I'd make this whole world where I had my own wrestlers. I'd make my friends in this world. They never fucking saw it, but I still did it. I'd sit there and watch the matches. Right. Yeah. And so a couple of years ago, I sat down. And funny you bring up YouTube because I started on YouTube. I fucking called a match and lo and behold, I tried that for like six months. A couple of those videos got me to YouTube partner and I haven't, I haven't gotten anything to really push since, but I have a couple of videos over a hundred thousand views. Right. Yeah. So it just kind of fucking happened by accident. So when I started on Twitch, same kind of thing. I mean, the wrestling show evolved. Everything I'm doing is just, I've always, I'm always trying to do something to get better, even if it's one thing. And I'm not like, I don't really need anybody's approval I don't need any like numbers. Sure. I mean, I'm not saying like when it's dropped to five, when I first started and things have happened, of course it's fucking, Oh my God, what the fuck's going on? But I keep my view count off. I really try to fucking just make good content. And as long as I feel like I'm making good stuff, I have people coming in. Like I measure my growth by how many people stick around. And if you look at my metrics, like there's a couple of times that some things have happened, which we all go through drama, things will drop. But I mean, it's a slow as fuck, but consistent, steady fucking 
growth. And I, I chase support for support people out of my streams. I fucking yeah. idiots that come in and want to fucking just talk. Like last night, somebody came in and told me that I should be showing copyrighted wrestling content. And because I don't, it's because I'm trying to make money, not look, not look out for the greater good. And instead of like, what? I don't enter train Dang. trolls, like, because it's my, it's everybody's right not to. And some people are really good with it and they have fun with it. I just fuck, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like he, I was nice to him at first, but then I was like, are you seriously like bitching at my chat? Because I had people that were like, dude, we're fucking not even talking about this right now. You know? Yeah. Just fucking yeah. get rid of him. But what I'm saying is like, I'm very protective. Um, I measure my growth by just looking at it and seeing how many people stay and also my average viewership. So uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to tell what's going on in my chat sometimes. If you watch my chats, my chats are not always that active. But then when a match is over, everybody will fucking freak out and they've been watching. And because I don't have my view count on, I'll go look later. and It's like, oh, shit, fucking 20 people were fucking watching three hours of a fucking wrestling show that I just made out of a fucking video game. Right. You know, so yeah. it's like I measure my growth by how hard I'm working by if I'm getting better by that kind of stuff, you know, and obviously behind the scenes, though, I don't freak out, but I am very if something happens, I try to fix it behind the scenes. I try to keep drama out of my shit, you know, yeah. but as yeah. far as the Patreon, I know we started talking about Patreon. I'll bring it back to that. Um, all of what I just said ties in because this is the thing I I have small goals in my stream. And for whatever reason, I'm not bragging. My community is fucking awesome. I will. I traditionally will fucking meet them or break them every month. And I don't talk about them a whole lot. I'm not fucking. I just put out content. I work. If if I put 24 hours into a show and don't make anything off of it, okay, I make the next one. And then maybe that next one will blow up. You know what I'm saying? So it's never yeah. been a thing where I've told people I needed support or whatever. And this past month was the first time where literally my wife came home one day and said, all of our plans are gone. Like she woke yeah. me up and said, I'm not trying to fucking, I know that you're just waking up. I know that whatever. And she's like in tears. She's just like, but you need to like tell your community, like we need help. And I was like, well, it just don't work like that. Like I'm not that person because there's tons of cheese dicks out there that, and not all of yeah. them are cheese dicks, but there's tons of cheese dicks. And I know a few that I don't associate with anymore that fucking just all the time have something going on all the time. They need some money all the time. They need this. And then all of a sudden they right. get it. And then the next month they need more. It's like, dude, will you fucking do something for yourself? So right. I wanted to show everybody that I am willing to work for myself. I'm putting out good content. And with the Patreon, when I started it, I thought about it a lot and I was nervous, dude. I don't get a whole nervous about a whole lot of shit. And when I fucking launched that thing, dude, my hands were shaking because it was something where I, I didn't want to feel stupid, Marcus, because like what you're saying, like, is it just like a give me money thing? No, it's really not. For me, I have saved every fucking wrestling episode. Like not everyone, but just about every fucking one for like two years. Okay. Wow. I got fans that love this content and they've been asking about the old episodes. I didn't know what I was going to do. So oh. what I've done is I'm just uploading started this week. I'm uploading episodes from a year ago and then I'll have for the first tier you get that. And then also my old podcast episodes. I'm a musician. So I'll drop like unreleased music all the time to them. Um, and then tier two, they get to have a watch along with me on Sundays of that. Tier three is like one more tier three and four are pretty much like tier three. You get a special monthly dinner party, which I'm going to make cool, but tier three and four are a little bit more money and yeah. they are for those people that just want to fucking support because yeah. I, I don't feel bad about that either because my community knows and they see I fucking put the work in, man. I'm not asking for handouts, nothing. I'm also not pressuring anybody. If you don't have it, just showing up is fucking awesome. Everything works together. But if you really do believe this is how you can make it happen, and dude, I am blessed as fuck, and I want to—I mean, I, I don't—I don't want to shout them all out right now. But like, there, there's seven people in my community that have already stepped up, and they have literally changed my fucking life. Hey, like, can you so, do yeah. me a favor? Yeah, can you shout them out, please? Yes, hundred yeah, percent. Take your time. Uh, if you want to yeah. pull up the list now but, or later, so, feel free. But. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, no, I can do it. It's, I mean, Ace Ace Cravens one. Uh, you got my buddy Brick Grimes, you got Cruz Diaz, you got the T, you got Keegan, fuck, and two more. Now I'm fucking, I actually do need to look at the list. Yeah, totally so fine. what I'm going to say is, way. so I, the list. I, I do agree with you a lot on this. So on the back end of this podcast, it's something that I, I need to do for me. Forget about Atrax and Nick. This is for me <clears throat> because like we've been doing this for five years next week. 
mm-hmm. right? And we're like the Patreon is coming because it would be nice to have a little bit of income to help pay for the website or the podcast feed and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm yeah. not. I, and the hardest thing for us is Nick and I have talked about this a million times and even a tracks now, like I can't produce or we can't produce any extra content. Right. Right. So mm-hmm. it's going to be Scheduling pretty much, wise, Hey, yeah. Hey, you want to support the show? Two bucks a month. You want to support the show? Five bucks a month. You want to be fucking the most awesome. Awesome. And the other thing, like I would love to do like a one, a one, like for the, for the, let's say third tier or second tier of Patreon. I would love to do a watch party a week, but I don't even have time for that. Right. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like in order to do that, like all three of us and feel good about it, all three of us would have to be there. Right. 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 Because they're, they're they're not coming to just do a, an eight tracks watch party or just a Nick watch party or just Marcus or just Marcus watch party. It would have to be us all three. So I really commend you for it. And dude, listen, I'm going to say it like this and I'm a business mindset. Like hundred percent business mindset. You need to do what you need to do for your family. And if you have to rely on people to help out, so be it, you know, and like you said, if they do great, if they don't great for me, I look at like my Twitch stream. I bet you, I don't Nick and a tracks will tell you this is true. I don't give a shit about my view count at all. I don't care about average viewers. You know what I care about? Chatters. When my chat isn't saying anything, it makes my stream so hard because I want to talk to people. Maybe that's why we're podcasters, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like, like and connect. Yeah. Know? Connecting with people. Like, I love that. Like, honestly, I could do just chatting streams and be just fine. Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? I Not even play, Absolutely. You know what I mean? And just mm-hmm. make it like IRL shit. You know, yep. the other thing is like, dude, if you ever need help or if you're ever like you have a big promotion thing you want to talk about, like make a 20 second clip. Right. We'll play it in our break sound like, hey, hey, next two Fridays from now, New Year's New Year's wrestling show. This date, we're going to be giving away this Come check it out. Dude, we'll play it on the show break sound every week until that day. Yeah, we got to help, help grow. You know what I mean? So that's the way it goes. But yeah. Stone Dog, who's the other two people? And why oh, don't you yeah. go back and say them all? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it real quick because, it, I mean, the only reason is just because on the spot. And it's overwhelming too, man. But like uh, Cruz Diaz, Mr. and Mrs. T, by the way. Ace wow. Craven, Epic Red, my buddy from Oklahoma. Brick Grimes, Harbinger 1975, and Keegan Too Cool. And these are people that, I mean, again, dude, I've told them and they know. And like my buddy Blue Monica says that I get fucking mushy on stream sometimes. I really don't fucking mean to. It's just that like, like, okay, Atrex, and this is another fucking tangent. But like when people give bits or a sub, yeah, I when they break one of my goals, which I always have small goals, I have one sub. 100 bits or a follow, right? And that's my three goals for the stream. When they break those, I do a cat claw. Okay. Okay. It's just fucking something stupid, but it's, it is silly and it's dumb, but I started doing it when I started streaming and it was when nobody was watching me. It's still fucking organic. It's still me. And the whole fucking thing of it is, is like people don't realize how big of a deal it is to support me at all because as a musician, I have made music for years. I was a, you know, video director for the biggest production company in the Midwest and still, you know, didn't get paid what I thought I should have got paid. I was the one there when it started, one when it ended, never got attention, never nothing. So this community stepping up and actually watching me, actually being willing to support, contribute, is fucking huge. And to me, I'm not fucking kidding you. I'm not saying, okay, I get one bits a fucking penny. Okay, I understand. But yeah. I also understand sometimes, dude. Listen, I this is fucking real. OK, like me and my wife, especially in the past couple months, have really fucking found out who some of our who, who people are that really fucking care. And it's not the people that always say they're going to. She had people when all this happened that were like that she had given money to because they needed it, that were giving her twenty five dollars, 20 bucks in her pocket. They had nothing, dude, coming out just because they thought she needed it. 
Like I have someone in my community right now that spends a lot of time in my stream that will contribute. And sometimes it's 25 bits, but I freak the fuck out because I know that everything's different for everybody. 25 bits could be somebody showing you the most support they've ever shown anyone that deserves fucking freaking out over dude. Because like I'm getting at this person I'm talking about is going through such a hard time right now that they are selling their blood for extra money to pay bills. Right. Yeah. Think about that. Not just doing it. And I know lots of people do it, but dude, that is fucking, that's sad to me, man. I want better for them. And I know that it is going to get better eventually, but you know, that's why it means so much to me, dude. That's yeah, why, right? that's why I fucking freak out. And it's not fake that like, and I mean it, uh, the views, the bits, the subs, the Patreon, it all works together. So whatever you can do, if you like my content, it all, again, it all works together and it's important to me, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know if that makes sense for what we were talking about, but a hundred percent it does. It does. And I want to touch on too, because you mentioned like, you know, for one show you put in 24 hours for some of our listeners that maybe don't know what exactly you put on, you know, for you and p- putting on a show. Cause I know you've showed me a little bit behind the scenes, right? What do you do? Right. Cause you set up in, I think it's two K is it 22 or 23 that you are using? 22 so you set up if i'm not mistaken in 2k22 your own custom ring and then you have your roster of characters and write a script and all of that for one just for one stream right that's just one show that's not even like the whole week's worth of shows how long does that take you on average for just a show um i mean legit it will take me the shortest it could take me is probably about eight hours and that's like fucking just if everything's going i don't have to pre-record much like whatever but right typically it takes 12 to 24 hours for every single show and it starts with me like i'll sit down i'll write the matches and i'll write you know the promos or what they're saying like not exactly what they're saying but just an overall outline and then mm-hmm. what i'll do is if i have to record some of the matches because i want something to happen or because i want to make sure the match is good then i will do that and record it and then i go in and i record like diff like if i want you know if you see a promo on my show what that means is a wrestler comes out and talks that is not one thing that is me recording after having to have the game render like four different fucking things so i fucking sit there you go in this creation suite and you can set what the arena is you can set who's coming out you can set what they do but you have to go through all these fucking menus to do it right and then you have to know what they all are right. how it works and i have to use a certain like i'm not telling all my secrets because it's technically not possible to do with the game what i do i have to do some stuff with my editing to make it all happen yeah but, yeah but so then i go and i record like the parts right the pieces and mm-hmm. then i then typically i will go to sleep and get like you know six hours sleep i wake back up and then when i wake back up get everything done then i sit down and i start actually putting it all together before the show so day of show is usually when i'm actually making it but i have to mm-hmm. do all the preparation before, the night before right so mm-hmm. like i get i get some sleep in the middle of it then i wake up i finish it and typically like i wake up i start working and then i'm usually if i'm late it's because i just got done it's never because i'm late and i'm not i don't make i'm not making excuses like i tell my yeah. community it can either be on time or good it's up to you. Like if you want it yeah, good, then absolutely. you just got to be here with me. And so it sucks sometimes because I, I would like to go earlier and stuff, but dude, like the most important fucking thing to me is, like I said, I want to know that I'm putting out something I'm proud of and I think is good. And no matter fucking how much time that takes, I'm going to do it. So yeah. it's all the process of the game, the matches, setting the matches, making it make sense. Also writing the story. And like when I'm editing, that's when I will decide what they're saying. And so, like, another thing I've started doing, I actually just released a short story this week that I played on my stream last yes. night. It's so a I've, good one. I, I want to write more, and I sat down and actually wrote a story. And I – because I was like, man, I, I write this wrestling show. It's two years into it. It's got stories everywhere. Like, the whole – the reason people to say they watch – I mean, I have non-wrestling fans that watch my wrestling show. They say they, they like the stories. Sometimes they just want to show up and see what happened, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I I took that same concept and I sat down and I'm like, well, what if I just wrote an outline and then I'll start writing the story and just like I do with the wrestling show, when the parts come up that they're saying, I'll write it then. So I just kind of do it all on the fly and then just make sure it's good. And there you go. So I'm, 
I'm, I'm really, you know, the wrestling show is awesome and I love it. And I'm, I love wrestling, dude. I love pro wrestling, but I love my kind of pro wrestling. And so I'll probably always do that, but I want to get more into writing in general. Like with everything I'm doing, I want to, I, I want to do a lot of things, but I really think writing could be something that I really fucking move into at some point. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I, I listened to the short story a thrilling adventure under the sea. That's all yeah. I'll say. Go listen to it. It's pretty, mm-hmm. it's, it's well done. My community liked it. And I didn't, again, that's another thing. I didn't know how people were going to take it, but with the Patreon and, and with everybody stepping up and I mean, dude, this is before I treated this like it was my job. Yeah, This is yeah. really my fucking job now, dude. But I know now that like you guys were saying, I have enough people to put confidence in me to say, Hey, we're going to contribute this every month. And that means that, You know, I don't have to fucking stress so much about just my fucking basics. And it's Mm -hmm. it's so like I can fucking really pour everything into the stream and bring what I can in with YouTube and Twitch and everything else I'm fucking doing. And the thing I want to get at is this. I'm very blessed to be in the position I'm in. The past couple of years, I started streaming because the pandemic happened. My wife wanted to be a wedding coordinator. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so she stepped up and she was doing that but she had to be out the door at 5 a.m most times and she was not home till late most of the time so to make that work it was i went from directing cameras and traveling doing stuff i really wanted to do right to pandemic happened that shut down she started doing her thing and i started just streaming and seeing what i could figure out lo and behold we're a couple years into it like i said with the five-year plan we had for our family that was all going to work but now it's like we didn't know we do know now she's got thing. I mean, she's got, she had an interview today. They want to hire her. She's got four more next week. She's awesome. And so we're going to be okay. But it, like, like I said, it's just, I did treat it like it was a career before, but now that it is, I'm even more fucking dedicated to trying to do more. And my point there was like, Marcus, you mentioned like having time, not having time. I fucking understand that dude. I would do so much more for people if I could, but dude, right now, like my wife can attest to it. I'm not complaining when I say how much I work and how much I don't sleep, but for real, she's like, dude, the other day, she's like, these people don't fucking understand that you don't fucking sleep. She's like, they don't get that. Like, it's not just pressing a button to go live. It's not, you know? Yeah, dude. Like it's, it's, if it was just that, I fuck everybody could do it. But that's what frustrates me is like me and Atrax talk about it sometimes. Like, and we never say it to them, but some people that hang out with us and you guys know as streamers, some people that hang out with you, they just hang out with you because they think they can do it too. And it's like, yep. homie, yeah. you, yes, you maybe could, sure, but it ain't just pressing a button, you know? No. It's not just playing games. It ain't. No, it even, really even, is not. Yeah, even, even my super simple stream, I, st- I still do extra stuff. <laughs> um, I, I, I get what you're saying. And you have to do it for you and your family. And like... My wife lost her job about a year ago and I have my, I have my career and I stream and that, let me tell you, that money that I make off of Twitch helps a lot. pays for fucking groceries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like my food, my, like the people that click that sub button or like you said, donate bits or whatever, that shit buys groceries like that's buying lucky charms or frosted flakes for my kids for the morning like i'm not doing a sob story i don't sleep i go to bed every day around midnight like if i get in bed before midnight it must be a monday when i'm watching nick or atrax's stream and i pass out on the couch watching their stream (laughs) because it's like the one day a week that i actually get to like just chill like legit, I pass out and then I wake up on the couch at like two in the morning and go to bed. Right. Yeah. And so I'm 39. And so I get it, dude. And well, you're going to be 40 in like a month. Shut up, Nick. <laughs> you're going to um, be like officially old. Oh, no, I am fucking old now. But, you know, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is hold your head high, dude. And like, don't ever feel bad about asking for help because the people who care. Okay, I, I'm going to just I can only give an example right today, like today. Scarlet. 
messaged in Discord and said, Marcus, you're my favorite streamer. I'm so thankful that I found your channel and you guys. Like, yeah. fucking gave me a tear in my eye. I showed my wife. She's like, oh, my God. Like, you see all these people posting their Twitch recaps, and but then you get one that's co- directly aimed towards you. That shit fucking means a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, I don't like you said, I don't need your bits. I don't need your subs. I don't need anything. You hanging out and chatting is the best or coming to play the game with me is amazing. Yeah. But. Moving on. Well, I was just going to say one quick thing. I was going to say, you you know, I understand where you're coming from when you have that emotionalness of being like, man, I don't want to ask people for extra stuff. But like, first of all, your base content goes so above and beyond nor- a normal streamer anyways. You provide so much for your community and your viewers that like you should never feel bad at baseline, first of all. Second of all, not that you do, but you get what I'm trying to say. Like you, you work your fucking ass off and it shows to make great content for folks. So like you you already have the good pro you're providing the good product and service on top of that. You have a great Patreon set up too with extra stuff. Like that sounds great. They get to watch all your old shows and they, you have like the dinner party and stuff and watch parties. I forgot precisely what you said. That's a lot of extra content, man. Like, yeah. and that all, and I totally understand that that's a lot of time because we'd like to do stuff like that. But we just don't have the time to. So like, I completely appreciate that. You should help hold your head high that Fuck you're yeah. providing a fucking awesome set of content for your community. And I, and you know, I, I am. And the reason why is because I am very stubborn and hard headed. I'm very bad at asking for help. I fucking hate it. I've been in situations where I will fucking eat shit and I'll be like, but you know what? I'm going to get you motherfucker at the end of this. I'm going to eat shit now, but I'm going to get you. Like, I just yeah. have this fucking thing, dude. It's like, you're not, yep. I don't know what's going to happen or what it's going to be, but I've always just had this thing. And maybe it's me being on spectrum. I don't fucking know, but you're not going to fucking hold me down. Like it's not going to happen. I'm going to do what I got to do in some way. Even if you fuck me over and get ahead of me, I'm going to fucking do it in the end. And it's not to dude. it's just because like, I believe in myself. And when I had to ask for help, I did, but I've talked to like, okay, Keegan too cool. And I mean, there's others like Harbinger too. the T I don't want to, I'm not trying to leave anybody out and they know this, Yeah. but they also know that like this guy, Keegan, man, met me about over a year ago. And I have, I've had specific conversations with him because him and then this other guy, Harbinger will just sometimes fucking bless me out of nowhere. I mean, this fucking headset Harbinger, right? Yeah. I don't, I, I am somebody that doesn't, if I have something, <clears throat> it's not <clears throat> usually the newest thing. I don't <clears throat> just have to have things. And so when I have them, I keep them, I take care of them, I value them. And so when people, you know, put into the stream, like I've talked to Keegan before, I'm just like, dude, like, I hope you realize, like, I'm not being a cheese dick. Like, you really impact my life. It really means a lot to me. And I want to show you that by just working as hard as I can, because I appreciate this. And the other thing I tell people is this, I don't need much. I mean, like, as far as a push, if you show me that you believe in me and I just have a few people that believe in me, that's all I fucking need to keep going. And so these people going above and beyond is, is fucking crazy. And I am proud of it. I'm also proud of the fact that I do work really hard. And I feel like that is something that, um, I feel like anybody would have a pretty hard time coming to me. And like that guy last night saying that I put profit over the greater good, like homie, go fucking pay for your own pay-per-views douchebag. Like for real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not, yep. And when I, I didn't address it then, but at the end of my stream, like just for that example, and I told my community, I'm like, that's why we're, we're growing and we're, it's slow, but it's strong because I don't suffer douchebags like this because I mean, okay, you want a real answer? No, I'm not going to fucking ruin my stream that I put all this time and effort into just so you can write some or watch some copyrighted content and it could possibly strike my channel. How fucking stupid are you? Because not only is that fucking right. me, that's fucking everybody here that actually enjoys this place. So right. I take yeah. offense to that dude. That's. This is what it is me and it's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of my work, but the, if I didn't have people watching, there wouldn't be a fucking channel. So I take offense to shit like that. Oh know. yeah, totally. Absolutely. Do you guys know who David Goggins is? Of course. No. Stay hard motherfuckers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stone dog. Mm. You are the David Goggins of Twitch and you, <laughs> like, and if you guys don't know who David Goggins I, is, yes. I want you guys to Google that motherfucker. He's the most motivating uh, I was listening. So he was on a podcast today 
with Joe Rogan. Can I give his quick backstory? In, in one second. And okay. they're talking <laughs> about, he's talking about how he's running right now at half savage and it fucking kills him. Cause this guy will run a 240 mile race. The, It'll take he, him 62 hours to run a race and then he'll take a day off and do another 200 running. Jesus. This dude is the hardest motherfucker on the planet and he ain't afraid to tell you that right. you need to suck less. He's like, look at if you're fat, it's your fucking fault. <laughs> I'll fucking blame anybody else. Yeah. He, he used to be like 300 plus pounds on like a, you know, average human frame. So he was super fat. Yeah. And then something clicked and he got like psychopathic levels of discipline. He's like, I, he just runs like crazy, works out like crazy every day. And then does these ultra, ultra, ultra marathons. And apparently both his knees are like completely blown out. And he just runs on them every day. He's like, I don't care. Stay hard. Mm. Stay hard. Because Keep running. Said, yeah. But that, yeah. Anyways, he's extremely motivating Fuck and yeah. works his ass off. And you remind us of him just with the Twitch flavor instead of running. So, Atrax, I know that you're uh, a crazy working man now, and I don't ever talk to you anymore. So, what have you been up to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy working man. Uh, yeah, work has been really good, actually. I enjoy my new job working at a warehouse again. I think I said it last week, but. I'll reiterate it that just the people I work with are really nice. And the job is, I mean, you know, we're moving metal around, so it's heavy lifting and whatnot. But also at the same time, it's not quick, rush, 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 hurry up, hurry up, like constantly get more than you can possibly handle out the door. You know, yeah. it's all right, look, get this, move this over here, come do this when you're done, you know, like that sort of thing. It's like um, a manageable pace. Right, exactly. It's it's a reasonable pace. So that being said, when I finally do come home, I'm pretty exhausted. It has been really difficult to get used to mornings, getting up at 6 a.m. Um, my mind is like, come on, you can do it. But my body says, no, nah, you, you really, really can't. Uh, and it's I, I, been... I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very it's very very rough out there, uh, but we get out there and we do it. It's frosty out. I hate shoveling or not shoveling, but like scraping ice, constant. You know. Yep, bro. We want to <laughs> listen. I was gonna say, wait, wait whatever. It one one, is cold. No, one, one. no one's gonna give me sympathy. I listen. Know, I'm gonna no, no. I'm I gonna actually it. give you sympathy. Yeah. Is to step your weak ass game up and yeah. find a local place right now. It's Christmas time. There's probably they're probably running a re car remote starter deal for like two hundred bucks. Find a remote starter. Yeah, you put your, your defroster on high before you walk in the house, and when you wake up in the morning, go boop boop twenty. It'll run for twenty minutes, and then bam. I don't yeah. want to pay gas or also the other thing is there's been a lot of car theft in my area. Yeah, but if your so car's locked, locked your car's locked. That. A remote starter starts. That doesn't starts matter. It. That doesn't yes, it matter. Does. It will shut on. Yes, it will. That yeah, doesn't well, okay, matter what's to the, the cracked up homeless guy that just wants to get in my car because it's warm. Yeah, but also it's what's the difference between well, if I guess if it's warm, but like usually I know the way my starter works, as soon as you like try to press the brake or anything to like try and get the car moving. If you've started it automatically, it shuts off. Oh, that could be. I so like, I don't want to pay the gas then either. How about that? I'll just what? deal with it and come. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe I will. Maybe I will get a remote starter. I don't know. It's a, it's, I got to get paid first. It's well, it's well worth it. I think a, yeah. re a regular starter is probably two or $300. But if you go for like the bougie, bougie, bougie one, like I got the bougie version for Christmas one year where I have an app on my phone and I can start, it's got like a little cell data receiver. Okay. So I can, I can start it from wherever. I think that was like 500 bucks, which is a lot of money, yeah. no matter yeah. how you slice it. But like for that bougie feature, I think it's kind of worth it. I don't know. I could have a PS five almost for that price. Dude, that is instead true. Instead of a remote starter Dude, and yeah. just scrape the ice for half of the year. Yeah. 10 years from now, we're going to be buying self-driving cars. I'm not even fucking kidding. Think about cell phones where they're at right now. Elon Musk is getting closer and closer. And I'm not saying, oh, Musk fan. We're not getting political here. Fucking oh, no, fuck that shit. no, 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 no. Smartest human being on the but, fucking but, planet. But my right my now, refutal dude, is not political at all. Please continue. No, I mean, just right now, it's just if you mention him, it's like, oh, I can't. Yeah, like, it's dude, true. one of my and I'm not I, I, I love this person very much. And I explain back. 
but I mentioned his name and I was like jumped on him just like dude like I didn't I just said his name I didn't say anything else you know what <laughs> well I mean? you can say right. whatever you want about whatever he's doing at the end of the day that motherfucker figured out how to get people to figure to fly a rocket into space and come back and land on a pad one well two yeah. Yeah, and then man. he made cars that drive themselves and that they're legal to drive in America self-driving. How do I know that? My brother-in-law has one. Yeah. And it drives all over the fucking place for him. Yeah. I've seen smartest him. dude alive. I mean, like, dude, and even here's the fucking thing. If he's the dude's got enough money to where, like, it doesn't even matter if he is the smartest dude alive. He's he's he has enough money as companies and he has he's doing things that people hate, but he's doing them anyway. So if he wants to make a car and have his company make this car that really does this, if he wants to do all this stuff, he's got the money. As long as his lifetime lasts long enough, dude, we could see some crazy ass fucking shit. Have you? I mean, you've heard about the neural implant stuff, right? Yeah, They're already yeah, testing. The yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, dude! Fucking sign me the fuck up. I'm serious. You can fucking know. right now. I want to know there kung fu in two seconds, like the Matrix. I'm fucking down. <laughs> Let's okay, go. Can, can I, I? I don't mean to be a party pooper, but I'm gonna totally be a party pooper. Uh, <laughs> I would be willing to bet. I'm gonna say whatever. I, I think I have two thousand dollars in my total savings. Currently, I would bet all of it that that is never going to happen. I mean, you're probably you're probably right. But at the same time, anymore, Neuralink. Yes. 100% well, OK, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Neuralink. Neuralink will happen where it, it's going to start with them helping folks who have had strokes and just provide stimulus yeah. to areas that don't get stimulus, which promotes neuroplasticity. My degree is in neurobiology, if you didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I can understand the the deficit like repair process that's what they're going to start with but like you learning skills that you don't have before is way beyond what a chip that stimulates certain neurons can do that's talking about like generating giant neural pathways that is a lot more complicated than just a chip what a chip can do you see what i'm saying so i'm not going to say that Neuralink is not going to be a thing but that's going to be a lot more advanced than where it is even close to now sure it's going to be a, a lot it's a lot more complicated a lot more biology than just the technology of like a chip if that well, makes sense if they can figure out how to put you know figure out what the fucking soul is and put our consciousness into some <laughs> ai maybe i'll be around long enough to actually do that someday though now I mean, that's that. a different story if you can transfer your mind and make a map of it and put you in like a robot body then that wrote <laughs> then that can get <laughs> learn all kinds of crazy shit but well, what if you, you're not, you're not, then you're not limited by biology anymore. Right. If that's the case, I just want to be put into a robot that can play video games all day because <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm coming to the terms with the fact that I may be addicted to video games because, like, <laughs> after work point. I come home and play video games and that's it, and I go to bed. Actually, I, I come home and I take a short nap because I'm exhausted. And then I wake up and play video games and then go to bed and go back to work. And I love it. But also at the same time, I know that I probably can't keep that up forever. Maybe I can. I don't know. Bullshit. You can't. Here's, well, the, here's the rules. You want to know the rules? I'll tell you the rules real quick. I have a, and I am bragging because I fucking earned this shit. I have a smoking hot wife. She's fucking awesome. And I'm not <laughs> saying it's the same for everybody. Cause it's probably not, but do you know what I've always done in every relationship I've ever had? This is how you keep gaming late into your life. I do, and this is what also makes streaming a little bit harder for me, but Marcus, you'll fucking get this probably too. I fucking – I do not play a game while they're awake. It does not happen. Like it's very fucking rare. If I'm playing with the boys, okay, whatever. But when yeah. she's awake, I do not play video games. Okay. It's And so it's just never been a fucking thing. So that way – now I will say this. Like I stay up all night. Like I, I'll, I'll put her to bed. You know what I'm saying? All right. We take care of business. <laughs> But yes. we, it's just, it's not as important to us to sleep all night together as just yeah. to have our sleep and have our time and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I get stuff Absolutely. taken care of and I fucking work and I play games at night when they're asleep and that's, but when they wake up, then I'm done. And I just fucking, I'm not saying I'm dad of the year because I'm a cranky motherfucker plenty of times. I'm not fucking perfect. I'm not saying that, but I just, yeah, like, yeah. I make sure that like, I'm not playing a game while they're does that make sense? And I think I oh, feel like yeah. that really helps things because like my wife, dude, she's like she's thought about it before. She's like, yeah, you you've never I've never like ever asked you to stop playing a game or anything like, yeah, you're right. You have it. You know, so, so there you I, go. I, I agree for me. Um, 
I I usually start playing games when the kids go to bed because honestly, like my wife's around the kids all day, every day. Cause I'm not around. Like she wants her quiet time. Like she don't want me fucking around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I do agree. But the other side of that is she understands that when we're doing content creation, it's helping buy groceries. And oh yeah. Do stuff. And like, if, like, yep. If Friday night is our night to hang out, then that's our night. You know what I mean? But like, it's for the greater good. So I completely get it. Yeah. But <laughs> if I may chime in quickly, anytime I've had, like, I think I've had, well, I, I, anyone in the nerds community who listens to the show consistently knows I do not have a great track record with li- the ladies <laughs> in terms of like dating mentally stable ones. However, I will do, I will say, uh, <laughs> That I, I do a pretty good job of like putting that boundary up of like, hey, like, look, I'm going to be playing like, yes, I want to see you tonight, but know that I'm I committed to playing games with my friends for t- probably two hours. So like, if you want to come over, great, but know that that's what I'm going to be doing. And then once that t- like two hours are up, then I can pay attention to you. And if like, yeah, I've found that if you communicate that on the front end of things, you most of the time it's pretty well, reasonable. You here's know? here's what has happened to me because I do that like. Even with music before I stream, she was she's yeah. always dude. She's like, go do what you got to do. Like, yeah, if I want to play, she straight up told me, just go play a game if you want to. Like, it's fine. She it is so not a thing that she would rather me just do it. It's like, it's a, you right, know what yeah. I'm saying? So right, 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 right. it kind of works that way. If you respect the time, then they'll respect yours, you know? Absolutely. Like, I could also just go with the uh, traditional loner gamer and be high on life. But I'm. T- or hey, find a, game, a game of girl, dude. There's, there's, and I'm not saying yes. that if you're, That's if you are with someone that really loves video games, like if my wife loved watching Grand Theft Auto, I'd fucking play it for her, but she doesn't. There she, you go. <laughs> right. she likes, she plays yep. puzzle games on her phone and she will not touch a controller. She fucking hates it. She does not, she doesn't care that I do it. She doesn't talk shit about video games ever. It's not that. It's just yeah. she does not want to play. So it's like, yeah, hey, okay, all right. Fair enough. You no. Know? Yeah. But if you have somebody that's into it, dude, I have friends that fucking, are couples that have computer like dual computer setups next to each other. I think that's cool as shit too. I'm not Kitty knocking and that. Kitty. You know? yeah. yeah. We have friends like yeah. It's like pretty that. fucking awesome, dude. Kitty it's, duo. Whatever well, works, but you gotta respect the relationship. Totally. But there's for sure. There's Marcus, move your mic. You're not talking into it. There you go. <laughs> well I was talking into it. I know. And then you've moved your head like a bobblehead. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway. And all of a sudden you went from sounding like this to sounding like this. Oh man. A Marcus <laughs> B eight one four bobblehead would be pretty sick. That would be. There must be a custom one. Hold on, please. Oh, finish your thought. To, I'll, I'll look it up. It. A Marlock bobblehead. We're killing it's, this thought. It's, All right, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a warlock, and then it's your head. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that would be so great. Please, someone in the community, make that. <laughs> Oh my god! Step one: hey, choose wait, a wait, body wait, and wait, upload wait, a photo. Wait, wait. Oh, we're Pen, doing it. Pendracos uh, did. If you look in the Discord <gasps> somewhere, that he like really? had one made, and like all I had to do was order it. He like designed it for me, Pen but at Dracos. that time I just didn't. Yeah, but anyway, oh, so yeah, what what I'm gonna say is to Atrex, there's nothing wrong with escape, not escaping, but playing video games, right? Yeah, like, and I always say it like for me. Like when I first met my wife, like if I wasn't doing anything during the day, I'd be fucking jamming video games. That's just what I did. Yeah. You know, yep. now I'm I work fucking 70 hours a week. I stream three nights a week. I podcast once a week. I have guys night once a week. Like it's I'm busy. In, but like my life is career, dad. Content. Yeah. And in being addicted to video games, dude, like I'm envious of you being able to do that because I say enjoy as much of it as you can because someday you're going to be like myself and Stone Dog. Right now. You know what I mean? Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just it's just a shift. But you always allow that to be a part of your life. But seeing that you've been high on life. Did you play yes. that game? Did you guys see that game? <laughs> Very yes. much. So. I've heard everybody talking and about it. I haven't seen. I've I, just seen screenshots. That's all I've seen. I, I love Rick and give, Marty, so I don't want to give too much away because it is. I feel like all of you should play it, um, and it is. I'm sure that all of you will because it's on Game Pass, and I know at least Marcus and Stone have Game Pass. Um, the The way I describe the game is 
literally it's a Rick and Morty episode, but a video game. That's amazing. Without any of the ties to Rick and Morty. So like, except for the fact that it's Justin Roiland, like voicing a majority of the characters. So like right away, there's a character that sounds like Rick and that sounds like there's characters that sounds like Morty, like the guns sound like Morty. They talk to you. The basic premise of the game is that aliens have come and taken over your planet and uh, you pick up this gun that then starts talking to you and transports yeah. your house with your sister into an alien world and you just follow the guns and like that's pretty much it i won't spoil anything else um i've played it and it is a ton of fun it is like i said it's just a rick and morty episode but a video game and it's it's so relaxing and calm it's and funny that's awesome hell yeah Yeah. highly highly recommend it's like a no pun intended first person shooter like sort of a linear rpg right yeah yeah, kind of. Okay. That's that's how I would describe it. I haven't seen many RPG-ish elements like leveling up and stuff. Okay. Other just... than you go and you can like buy different guns and, and, you know, items and stuff. Like there's an item shop, you know, that you can yeah. go buy stuff with. And I think that there's upgrades in there, although I'm not sure. I haven't gotten that far yet. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, uh, good. If I may circle back real quick. Uh, to the bobblehead thing, they're only like a hundred bucks, so this <laughs> is totally happening. Only a hundred. Okay, well that's a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. But if I wait a couple months, I think I can, I can squirrel away thirty bucks. <laughs> New community and squirrel goal. Away another thirty bucks. New community and, goal. And you know, yeah. There you go. Oh, and then we can raffle off the the bobblehead. There you go. The yeah. community. Boom. Well, no, no. Oh, Nick, I wonder if it's cheaper if you buy like five of them. Probably, you know, because if so, then, you know, we could like get some community members. I'd be willing to chip in some in a couple months, you know. I, yeah, I don't know. I think I think we could get some of these Marlock bobbleheads made. I, I think fucking, I think I'm on to right to something. I fucking hate you guys. Any of you <laughs> listeners out there, DM us. We'll get a we'll get a secret Marlock bobblehead group going. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. So, what else have you been playing in your uh, so, gaming addiction? Oh, so many. So, I Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I swooped it after refunding Satisfactory because it was fifty percent off and it looked nice. good to me. And I was like, you know what? Fine. I had gotten my first paycheck, even though it was a very small one because it was only a couple days of work, and I splurged just a little bit on myself. And I was like, I'm just going to get this game and enjoy it because I've now heard good things. And I yeah. will say now, I'm, I don't know about the past at all, but now this week, as of me playing it, it has been a ton of fun. And I see it as like if they add to it and they keep expanding on it or even make a second one that has a more stable launch, yeah. I think that it could be a very, very strong contender for like game of the year or something like that because it's just it's so good it's it is good it's so good that i didn't finish it i'm on the last mission Ooh. I, I literally i'm I, I have this weird thing and it doesn't happen with everything but like if i like something a lot i don't want it to see it end <laughs> i'm fucking yeah, weird. right and so yeah. i just like i haven't finished the last mission it's been a couple months it's really fucking good and but here's the thing that that, that disappoints me about cyberpunk you can talk to me all day about all this stuff you have in the game. I fully expected this game to go on after the last mission. And it's like, no, oh, if you do okay. this, you're just pretty much fucking done. So that is extremely fucking disappointing to me. Like, yeah, at yep. least well, I know it ends. Yeah, like, but it, I, I think it was because they were supposed to have a shit ton of DLC. Yeah. But because they released the game all fucked up, mm-hmm. like they had to fix it instead they of had they to fix it instead fix of it making. First, yeah. Yeah. Because I guess like development cycle. So uh, the way I've understood what p- developers have said is said company says, hey, developer group, you guys are going to develop this game for five years. Post launch, you're going to have two years. So most times they finish the game they can start making dlc but at this game has been two years of them fixing all the problems of what it needed to be done yeah like if it was released right now hands down it would be it's a better game than god of war yeah is it better than Elden ring i don't know 
yeah, to me, it it's would comparable. be comparable. Yeah, right. I would definitely say it's comparable at least. Right, but that's what I'm saying. The it's gunplay is the gunplay in that game is unlike any other, in my opinion. I really like the fights. The gunplay is. Yep. I can't really describe how, but it's just fun. It's not like any other shooter. And right. It's, again, I can't really explain why. It's just I loved getting in big gunfights in that game. It's just really fun. And That's it cool. has that like Fallout style of choice. So like what you say has weight to it, more or less. I remember Ooh. there was one time where I was I was playing early on and I just clicked on some I don't know, I thought it was a fairly standard choice, you know, like just a usual conversation choice. And I got a little achievement that was like joined this group or something like that and i was like wait what and i clicked on it and i guess if you choose a different option then you'll join like some other or like it it branches off right there i didn't even know that that like small little thing just kind of branched it off in that other direction so i thought that was super cool right off the bat it had that kind of fallout style to it yeah Um, i love i mean it's also fun you're speaking my language fallout is one of my favorite franchises but um Yes. I, I, and I, and I like how in The Witcher 3 like a lot of your choices like have really heavy weight to that quest line, you know. Right. You're totally speaking my language here. You're selling me on Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, I was excited yeah. for it before it came out and then when it came out and it was, you know, all broken and stuff. And I was like, well, right. I'll, I'll shelf that for a while, but there's still some, I mean, you still run into it. Like there'll be people that are just like straight up T posing, moving down the walkway or something like that. But I also yeah. wonder if that's my computer because even, even now it struggles to, I think I have it on like medium graphics. It struggles to get 60 frames in some yeah. of the really like the intense firefights where there's more than, I don't know, 10 or so combatants. What GPU do you use? A 2060. It's got six gigs. So it's, it's average, you know. Well, like your I think CPU it's good for now, an i7, well, seven seventy k. You have sixteen sixteen gigs. gigs yeah, yeah. It should be okay. Yeah. yeah, it should be okay for medium. But if you turn right. on the DLSS, wait, do you have an Nvidia? Oh no. yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. If you turn on the DLSS, you'll actually get like a hundred frames a second. Oh really? So maybe yeah, I need that, to turn that on then. Turn it on, dude. All right, It'll change I'll your turn gameplay. it on. Yeah. Okay. I thought having it off would make it better. Maybe I need no, to just do that. No, no, that the whole purpose of that is to make your games run better on a graphics card that's older. And I'm okay. not saying your I'll graphics card is older. I'm just saying it is. Yeah. Well, 27, well, yeah. 2018. So it's four years now. So it, it is older yeah. in the tech world. Right. Especially now with what their 40 nineties, I think are finally right. dropped and launched. You playing anything else? So Yes. Thank you for helping me move on. Um, I've dropped in quite a few times to Call of Duty DMZ. I haven't dropped the 70 bucks for the whole Modern Warfare. Uh, Stone and I have had some great games. We've escaped a couple times, gotten some X-Fills. And uh, I enjoy it. It has like a Tarkov vibe. And for me, it is... Uh, less, it's like more casual than Tarkov. Tarkov gives me like this real kind of hardcore vibe. Whereas this one is, I mean, yeah, if you die, you lose all your stuff, but also at the same time, you can like save, I think it's up to three weapons per day so that you can at least have some guns. And after I think two hours, then one of them refreshes. I don't know. So like there is options to make it a little bit more casual friendly. Yeah. Um, I I'm enjoying it, especially like the free to play, you know, I haven't purchased anything in it, no packs or whatnot. Uh, and so for that price tag of free, it's pretty great. It's no longer the hundred gigabytes of call of duty. It's only 30 gigs. So well, I'm happy about that. The, the free part is if you buy it, it's the like free part. A is. It's like all of well, our drive. <laughs> right. I will, I'll yeah. tell you this, Atrex, if you didn't know, and it's, it won't matter to, I don't think to anybody listening right now, but this weekend, I think now till Monday, you can play multiplayer free. Ooh, all right. So I'm probably going to stream Saturday if I can, like just a one-off because I, I got people in my community I don't hardly ever see unless I do stuff like that. And I right. mentioned it in Discord and had a few people react. So I might just do it because again, it's, 
a lot of people like Free. will just play DMZ with me a couple of games and I have to switch out and play the other stuff with because they haven't bought it. So it's just a good chance. And I'm telling you guys, I don't promote Call of Duty. They're not paying me shit. In fact, I'm still pissed in for a lot of things they've taken my money for. But this game is really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, the multiplayer aspect is you need to try it, especially if it's free. I recommend all you guys um, if you haven't yet. No, Absolutely. I have the game. I love it. So they I, I wish yeah. I played it more. They announced that there's raids coming. There's gonna be a raid in Call of Duty. Like a legit raid. Yeah. Yeah. Like I need to max out some guns. Marcus yeah. is a like is a big I love MMO I guy love fucking raiding. raiding. I think I they're out it. now. I think it I think they just came out with the update. If I'm not wrong, I think I saw it. I haven't played yeah. it yet. I opened it and I had like a forty gigabyte update, so I'm assuming that's what that was. Yeah, yeah. So Could that be is out. something yeah, so if that's maybe the case, we should do that this weekend. I don't know. Is it three or four people? I think the trailer had four four operators in it. I'm not it's sure. It's weird what they choose for three and four and six. I don't want to go uh, off on a tangent on this either, but like multiplayer, you can have six people in the quick matches. But if you go into the bat, like the the big battles, like the big battle domination or or uh, invasion war? modes, yeah, 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 ground war and invasion, you can only have four people with you. It's like what the fuck is this? It's like it's, yeah. it's a four man squad. And then DMZ yeah. is three, and battle royale is three, yeah. right? Or is battle mm-hmm. royale four? Battle royale's four. Battle Battle Royale, yeah, you can do quads in Battle Royale, but then I'm DMC, not, I'm it's not like good at Battle Royale, Royale, yeah. I'm, I'm okay, but like it's it's not yeah. it, all I do is camp on Battle Royale and then I'll just wait and try yeah. to survive because I I'm not I just get romped, dude. Like if like yep. by people in Warzone. Like it's just I, I can handle myself in multiplayer matches and shit, but I just am not right. good with because I'm well, just fucking sitting there looking at stuff. Oh, I'm high. This is great. We're camp. Whoa, just dead. Fucking yep. everybody's dead. Right. <laughs> you know, like, I'm the same way. <laughs> But, People yeah. drop in, instantly find their loadouts, and just gun you down from across the map. Yep. Right. But that's why the raids really intrigue me because it's it pushes you to that content where you're going against AI, not you're not going against people. Yeah. You're going right. against the AI. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Right. And that's what I enjoy about DMZ as well, actually, is that there are a bunch of AI running around. So even if you drop in with nothing, you can go goon an AI and take his RPK. And at least you have like something that you can now run around with, sure. you know, within the first couple of couple of minutes. And also, I want to kind of mention this, too. I was thinking about this at work the other day. Um, can we just as gamers kind of evolve a little bit and start doing away with aim assist on games that have keyboard and mouse in them because i've noticed a lot and it's in apex it's in call of duty thankfully what? it can't happen in csgo um i don't think I, no, there's I, no, no aim assist there's no aim assist keyboard on keyboard mouse. mouse but no, no no this is what i'm saying but controller players come dropping oh. in Apex yes. and and Call of Duty yes. specifically are the two that I'm thinking of. Um and it, it's incredibly frustrating to me who is pre-firing this corner because I know you're going to come running around it and I'm shooting at the corner and you just like wide swing it out and because you have aim assist you're like head tapping me. Right. I, that it drives it's, me it's nuts a, too. It's a severe disadvantage anymore to play those games on keyboard and mouse. But for years, the advantage was keyboard and mouse, and we all got trashed as controller players because oh, we got to play keyboard and mouse. So and then we just get mowed by you guys. So you know what? I'm I'm fine I don't have with problem that. With it. I'm fine. I was I played on controller for years as well, and even games like now when like Halo Infinite, I played yeah. on controller for a while, and then I switched to a keyboard and mouse. Oh, and yeah, that's way better. It it is it it is it feels a lot better and. But it is incredibly frustrating. Um, it it feel it just it doesn't feel good. We need to. There needs to be a better way to address the because like oh well you can just turn off crossplay matchmaking. Well no because there's still people that play on PC that they just use controllers. use controllers because they want the yeah. aim assist for it. Right. Well I I feel I feel like get good <laughs> yeah 
Like I, mean, I and, and I'm a terrible like. That's what I'm person. saying. You don't but need like, aim assist. Get good. <laughs> yeah, I know. But shoot like, a gun. Yes, exactly. I was gonna like, say I do fire and call. I'm like, I'm not good at this Call of Duty. I'm way better at the Treyarch ones, like Cold War. But like stuff. What I'm trying to but. say is, I think it's past aim assist. I think that so many of these controllers now have are modded in the sense of like you can buy the Xbox elite controller and it has rapid fire triggers built on right so like i think the response in triggers is so fast now mixed with aim assist it's a different level of game right but i can't go back like I, when i played destiny one with the controller even i played destiny two for like 30 minutes i was fucking lost i felt like i was like holding a controller, but I was trying to bounce a basketball with a controller because I'm not used to it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But then yeah. again, if I played like Mass Effect, I would prefer to play Mass Effect with a controller. Yeah, that was me playing right. when I played FIFA the first time. Again, I was like, how do I, what is in my hands right now? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Some games, I agree, are better with a controller, but in the hybrid games like that allow keyboard and mouse and a controller especially fps games um i don't know i feel like the controller aim assist needs to like go away no because if something. you took off if you took off aim assist that's where you would see a pc player has a complete advantage that's what they've had forever that's what i'm saying so now that there's not so much advantage they're all just bitching they're like well you know what this isn't fair well you know what cry me a river a tracks that's what i say suck less <laughs> i guess so I guess so. I I'm just want to I mean, win. I want to win by more. I don't really I have a dog in the by. fight. I never think about it because honestly, I've always played controllers since I was a kid, and that's just why. Now, I I have there's games you can only play with keyboard and mouse. Sure, I do, but typically, like right now, I have, uh, you know, one controller actually hooked in to the PC, and I nice. have yeah Bluetooth as well. I have a Series S. I still have a console, um, because I like like you know I get the advantage of PC. But I like the fact that I don't have to worry about my game working on my Series S. Like typically, it's just gonna yep. fucking load up and work. It's and it's gonna look great. It's gonna be fine. You know. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You're absolutely I've, right. I've been enjoying I don't my know. PlayStation. All I'm gonna say is as well. When I play Destiny at 120 frames a second versus sure, the cool. console, it's gonna be 60. Like you can see that difference. Oh uh, yeah, I, no, that's true. Yeah. I prefer PC overall, but I do also appreciate the yeah. console. Yeah. If I had a bunch of money. And just no limit, then sure. But I mean, for just having to rely on what you rely on, can't go wrong with console too. But I no. totally get it. For me, I um before I like I have a giant change happening for me in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about it here or not, but it's a big fucking change for me. I probably he, will eventually. Yeah, he. I'll just break the news right now. Marcus uh, is finally graduated to pull ups. Dude, great job! Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Marcus. I'm a big kid now. <laughs> Ding. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> but before before I do that, I am 100% buying a new CPU motherboard and RAM. And so nice. it's, it's, been, it's been sitting in my it's been sitting in my cart for I've like new egg, yeah. Ever. No, for like a week now cuz I just Oh, okay. I, all right, so a customer of mine works for Intel. And he's trying to get me the i9 13,700K or whatever the fuck it is. It, I'm hoping it happens because if it does, it saves me $700 and then blah, blah, blah. But that's going to be my big purchase for myself. Nice. Because once, awesome. once this change happens, there ain't nothing else. Mm -hmm. And right All now, right. My, my, my computer is being bogged down by my processor. Because yeah, you have a 3090. Yeah. I have a 3090, but I have an i9 9900K. Oh, you poor baby. No, How much it's... RAM do you have, Marcus? 64? 64? Yeah. Damn, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that well, is so, well, plenty. I'm, yeah, but it's not going to be good because I'm buying a motherboard that needs DDR5. Oh, so you're going to have to... You so guess who's getting you're a, have to get more Somebody's RAM. getting 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Oh, oh yeah. Up. Do nice. I have to That's do anything up. besides obviously clip it? You just plug it right in and it's fine. Yep. As long as it's all the same brand of, of RAM. You it's know fine. what? You know what your new PC shouldn't play? Uh, A Destiny 1 remaster. 
So yeah, I, I have to throw fuck this off. out there. Fuck no, no, no. off. So I, I listened to the Guardian Downcast that Marcus was on uh, yeah, last this week. past week. Shout out to the Guardian Downcast, by the way. The episode was great. Marcus texted me while I was at work. Or he texted the little group that Nick, Marcus, and I have. And count, was like, the Council of you, Nerds. You gotta listen to the first 25 minutes of this Destiny 2 podcast because you love Destiny 2 so much, Atrax. And I said, sure, I will. Because, of course, good friends of the show. And uh, so I listened to it. And Marcus said on there, oh, a Destiny 1 remake would be great. That's and not I what I have said. To re- yes, you did. Is something al- We need a Destiny 1 remake. I think they should make a no. Destiny 1 remake. You You're mentioned like, my life Destiny will not be complete one until Destiny remake. One remake happens. Oh no, man, that is I wish the we had quote. one because I want to play it on PC. Blah blah blah. Well, so there's so I did say I wish they would put it on the PC, and I did say that I wish they would just do an HD remix of it, just up upscale it to 1080p, 60 frames, and then release it and get rid of Destiny Two and make it Destiny Online. So you can play all of the content of Destiny and pick and choose what you want to download. You want to play Destiny 1's vanilla story? It's 30 gigs. Click this button and have it be in tiers in sections and you choose what you want to download. If you want 500 gigs on your hard drive, you can do that. But then make all the content relevant. That makes content for people to play the game. And what I mean by that is so you're not stuck. Like you don't run into a wall of what the fuck else do I do? Of like only the end game. Right. Content. Only the end game to do whether, oh shit, I've never done this story or maybe I'll go back and grind for this gun or try this mission. That's all I was saying yeah. is right. Th- it's a good idea for Bungie to do that. Yes. I, I agree. Okay. So but, in that but, instance, but, I but, agree. But Atrax, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hasn't been 10 years. We don't need a D1 remake if that's what you're talking about. Listen, but you're not. No. Listen, Destiny, I'm going to make this real quick, and I ain't going to take much time to say this, but Destiny can straight up fuck off. Because yeah, yes, I, yeah, let's go. I fucking One bought. Of us. One I of paid us. $60 for Destiny 2. Okay. okay. I didn't play it for like, I don't know, a while. Okay. Yeah. Um. About like I don't know six eight months ago, I was like, hey, you know, I never played this before. I bought it, like so. I'm sure I have the stuff for the game because I fucking paid for it, right? I boot it up and I get I'm streaming it and I get through like two different things and it's like to continue campaign, please pay like sixty bucks or fucking one hundred twenty. Like some of them are like a hundred bucks. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I asked like again, Blue Monica, she's a Destiny streamer, like she fucking plays this game all the time. I'm like, how the fuck do you? How did you afford all this shit? Like, when, like, how did I buy a game that literally I have to pay hundreds of dollars more to play when I already felt like my mind's exploding because I get it's free for everybody now, but I paid for that motherfucking shit, dude. Same Why? here, Stone. Yep, all the stuff you pre-order. I pre-ordered so, Destiny 2. All of what? that is now free to play. Like, is it just me or, like, these stories better be giving me a fucking reach around or, like, something. Because, like, why am I paying <laughs> double the price of the original game for your stupid fucking story? Like, I get it. But that's fucking stupid. Like, am I missing uh, guys? Please, I want you guys to tell me, Stone Dog, you don't understand. This changed my life. This whole story. But I don't get it. So please tell me. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either, Stone. <laughs> I'm with you for the record. Marcus? Marcus, Marcus, like, <laughs> Marcus has the floor. Yes, please, Marcus. <sighs> I was just, no, no, listen. I was just waiting for you guys to finish your fucking rant. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's it. So, a couple things. So, like any game, okay, I'll use Star Wars The Old Republic. When Star Wars The Old Republic came out 10 years ago, you had to buy the game for $60, right? And pay mm. your $15 a month sub. Mm. Over the course of years, the content becomes free because they want more people to play the game, mm-hmm. right? Then Destiny made a critical mistake, in my opinion, when they they content vaulted shit. So, like, the original oh, campaign yeah. for Destiny 2, you can't even play it anymore. Nope. Like it's sitting in a vault somewhere because they said it was hard drive space, but nobody fucking cares about it. 
my theory, and I said I it last do. week on it's 100 well, gigs already. Well, yeah, but who gives a fuck about that? Dude, you download fucking Call of Duty. It's like 150 gigs, and every time they update the game, it's, it's 40 gigs, gigs or yeah. 50 gigs. They don't give a fuck about your hard drive space. Yeah, they don't care. You want to play Call of yeah, Duty? You're fucking buying a, you're buying a hard drive just for Call of Duty, right? No other game gives a shit. So I think that's a crock. In my opinion, I think when they left Activision, in because why the fuck would Activision ever let them out of their contract? It's a gold mine. Like, yeah, why would you ever service yep. game a like live that? service game that's producing thousands and thousands, millions of dollars? Why would they release that? I yeah. think that there was some dirty shit going on. They were like, fuck you. We're going to do this, whatever. I don't know this, but I think in the contract, it said by this day of this year, in order for you to content fault it, you can't earn any more money off of our content. We're gonna con- you have to content mm. vault our content. I think oh for them to stuff that, that we released while you were uh, with our company right and cannot they, be and they, right. To right and they negotiated it and was like oh. well we're not gonna get rid of it all but we'll get rid of the first or second expansion first and second expansion in the original release content never come back say it's hard drive space make people happy and call it a day yeah and then Activision is like oh yeah that was stuff that we. We helped you produce, so you can't continue to make money off. That's that correct. Everything. So I think that's that I makes think, a lot more sense. I think that's what happened because, again, in my mind, why the fuck would they ever content vault the original Destiny Two story? Like, I can understand if you want to get rid of some maps. Like, they got rid of strikes. They got rid of this. They got rid of that. It's fucking dumb to me. But I think it's something in their back end contract that allowed them to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Could be, but Jim back Morrison. to back. So back to your destiny thing. I understand what you're saying because I've bought games and never played them. And when I go to play them, they're free. So it's like you threw away 60 bucks. I get it. But the way I look at it is this, you know, it's that get good mentality. Dude, you bought the game. You wanted to play it. You never played it. You decided to turn it on 10 years later. And now it's free 10 years later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or six years later, whatever it is. Yeah. Me, I bought Star Wars The Old Republic's collector's edition for 150 fucking dollars back in 2011. Opened a box, got the awesome Malgus st- statue, played the game for two weeks. Couldn't handle not playing Black Ops with Nick and my our friends. I stopped playing Just it jamming. because I'm like, this is an old man's game. Like, I can't play this. This isn't enough action. Then my daughter was born or my wife was pregnant and I was looking at the Valgus statue go, I'm going to give this game a go again and got completely immersed in. But when that game came out, it was all free to play. Like all you had to do is buy the sub, but you didn't have to do that right away. But I bought the game originally, but it's already free. So I threw away $120 or whatever it was. So I understand what you're saying, but you got to look at it on the flip side. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, having for me. ex- having experience on the flip side, though, what I will say is this: that Star Wars for free gives you a whole lot of shit. I mean, you could play that game for fucking a long time for free. Yeah, Destiny, there ain't nothing free about fucking Destiny, bro. Like, nah. you fucking boot that yeah. game up and you're playing like a couple rounds, and then it says to continue, you have to pay. Well, I, insert quarters. Okay, so but to, to go on the quest that you need this weapon to go into this free it's, raid it's, for it because you can't clear me. the raid without this particular weapon, yeah. you need to purchase this DLC so you can go on this quest line to get the weapon it so you can clear scummy. the raid. That's but, free. But mm-hmm. again, I don't believe. Listen, listen. <laughs> I believe. Like my okay. So let me ask you guys this. So what's a better model? Right, a free to try game. Right? No. Free to try it. And then if you like it, you buy it. Okay. Or a so free a to play game with the demo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think but, I think but, the discrepancy is that you originally bought it and then they had to, they made that kind of thing free. So if you that's get, the shitty part. Big picture, I'll be controversial probably because I said it the other night on stream. I'm an I'm an old enough guy where I remember, and I'm going to be screaming at the sky again at the clouds, but I remember when you bought a game and you fucking got the goddamn game, and that's what you got. And you didn't have to fucking pay extra because the fucking game was... Now, I realize it's a different age. I realize updates, all that shit. However, 
like WWE 2K22, it might not be yeah, a but perfect it's a game. Different game. Yeah, but it is. It's a. It's. It, it, sorry, I have to say this. Go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but that is a complete different game. WWE 2K22 is not a live service game. They produce the game. They might update the roster. Okay, John Cena's the uh, the champion now. Update. Oh, SummerSlam is coming. Update. Survivor Series. Update. But it's not a live service game. They're, the model of that game is you buy it and you play it. It's a complete different model. You're not World of Warcraft. You're buying the expansion and paying a sub to play the game. Their free to play takes you to level 20. So like it's a free to try game. Yeah. Just like Destiny is. It's. But you still pay for the expansion. So if you play World of Warcraft, you pay 60 bucks and you pay for your one month. So you actually pay 75. After that month, you can't play the game unless you're going to re-level a tune to level 20 yeah. because you have to sub to the game. I think nice you just bought the I, game. I, I understand what you're saying. It. And I'm not even arguing with that. I, I think that my, like my overall opinion is and that I think people will disagree with is that I hate free to play. I hate it because when I was yeah, a kid, yeah, free to play is rough. When, and that's again, this makes me sound old because when I was a kid, to play a game, I had to save up for the money or I had to wait for Christmas, and it was special. Now it's like, as a musician, I'm gonna fucking drag this into it. Everything's oh, yeah. free. Everybody can make a song. It's all free. It's all. It's like, what the fuck? Like, I wonder why we're not making money anymore because everything's fucking free, and that's a whole different discussion. But like. Yeah. That's and it's I understand it and I am happy that my friends get to play and I get to play stuff some like Halo, you know, if I didn't have the money for Halo and I love Halo. It's like my favorite game of all time. Just any pretty much any Halo. I'll fucking I love it. But like I I understand it, but I do really wish that. Even if it was a subscription, even if it's like, listen, if you want this game, you're committing to a subscription for 12 months. You know what I mean? Like I would I would rather have something I'm paying for than something that's free for everybody. And I don't know. That's just me. That's where I came from on it. I understand. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's a it's a it's really a hard model. But what I will say about Destiny is, I don't really know many people that are like middle ground on it, right? Like, yeah, I, I like, yeah, I would say Nick but- is the most middle ground on it. Like Nick, Nick came in and played Witch Queen. He enjoyed the story. Yeah. And like we played it together a couple times, but like he didn't want to do anything after the story was over. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's not my jam. Yeah, I'm, but like you know. when Lightfall comes out, I'm guessing you'll probably play. Yeah, the story. Yeah, I'd be, for me, I'd be that's game. a forty or sixty dollar purchase worth it. Yeah, because the story is really good. Maybe you play it on legendary once, but like Nick is gonna play Lightfall, play the story, be able to talk about it, and move on. Me, I'm gonna grind the fuck out of it because that's my my jam yeah i'm not an mmo yeah. guy so i'm, I'm and, and dude you know marcus if the if the fucking expansions were because i am very much like a story guy i'm not like a grind after the fact guy with nearly any game so like yeah. but i really did like this where the campaigns were going i would i would gladly pay ten dollars for those campaigns and i would get it however some of them being like 50 70 like i think one was like 120 bucks i'm like holy shit dude what the fuck is that so i, I do agree a hundred percent that there should be like a bundle where you get all of the old expansions and it's like 50 bucks, right? Like I do agree with you there charging $20 for every expansion. And then the latest expansion is still $50. Like as a new player coming in, that's a, lot. That's a huge investment for a game that you don't know if you're going to like. Yeah. And what sucks is. So if you come in at, witch queen for the first time and that's all you have as soon as that content is over they're going to be like oh did you do this no did you do this no well let's go do this oh i can't i'm locked out Mm -hmm. i don't have the 30th anniversary or i don't have this or i don't have that so i do understand yeah but at the end of the day it's a live service game and that's their payment model it's it's the same with Warzone. That's why I don't enjoy Warzone because you get and Warzone's a different story. But I don't enjoy just fucking idiots that say shit online that they wouldn't say to people in their face. And this is just yeah. me being how I am. Oh like, yeah, that too. And I'm not saying I'm a Karen about it, and I'm not getting all fucking. Oh, I'm just gonna cry because someone said something. But no, if I get in the game and somebody who got this game for free is just spamming the N word in the chat because they know they can, like letter by letter, because they're a fucking idiot. And I have to see that shit or they're just fucking saying it's just it's just fucking annoying to me. Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you guys right now. (laughs) 
I, I know where this is going. Nothing. Like all of you motherfuckers out there that think online gaming is brutal. Oh, I was fuck, there. It fuck off. Modern Warfare 2s. There yeah. was no mute. Uh-uh. Listen, the no. shit that came out of those kids, people's mouth back in the day, was like that was real. Like and they I mean, knew you, that they weren't being recorded either. Right. Right. Like well, the shit but, that came out of their mouth. Let me tell you that shit was wild. Dude, that was, hey, that was Marcus, wild. Get, hey, correct me if I'm wrong too, though, but that was also back in the day where there was more social interaction. And when you went to a bar and were around people, you were fucking around people. You knew like had face, more face to face confrontation. I'm not knocking yeah. the other people here, but I kind of am no, with your friends that tell me the same thing. It's not the same story anymore. There's not that yep. there's plenty of people that don't realize you can get your shit rocked real fucking quick. And so now you have all these little bratty fucking idiots talking shit on Warzone. You're right, Marcus. Whenever like back in the day, that was there was not for the faint of heart. No, it was, no. It was straight up. I made friends by trolling people. I used to be the person. What I would do is I would do the are you mad, bro? And I would like, are you mad? <laughs> yeah. Bro? And I'd be like, dude, mad, fucking bro. stop saying that. Like, dude, sounds like you're mad, man. Are you mad? Like, and I just like say <laughs> That's what I used to do, and then I made some really good friends doing that shit, you know? So yep. I used to just play the tequila song through my mic. <laughs> <laughs> and the mics were, like, really terrible. Back dude, I too. still get a kick at that. And, more, dude, I will say, like, when you leave the proximity chat and stuff on, they still get some golden moments now in the oh, new, yeah. in the yeah. new Call of Duty. It's so great, dude. Oh, like, the other yeah. day, somebody's like, dude, we're, why, why you got to do that to me, bro? We can be friends, bro. Come on, right. bro. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a clip of two, the, the proximity chat's fantastic. Doctor Disrespect has some great clips of that. It's like I'm coming for you. Like, no, don't do it, Doc. It's like I see you on the map. It's all over. And he's like, no, all right. and then he downs him. He's like, all right, big. He's like, I'm sorry. Kiss the ring. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. There, you gotta go find the clip if you if you're interested. But. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's great. anywho. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. Speaking of like. Claim, uh, community fun and get together and uh, have it some some awesome group content. Clan night's coming up, right? Clan night was or, Tuesday. Yep, uh, it's awesome. I personally love the new season content. I was actually going to say, I actually really love the seasonal model in a game. And what I'm realizing about Destiny is, Destiny is really other game friendly MMO. They want you to play other games like I don't want to play other games. Yeah. But the game like they give you like nine weeks of story and then there's still another nine weeks to the season. But after the story stuff is gone, like if you're max level by then, like, cool, go play another game. Right. And, and come back for the next season. Start. That's correct. And, and give us your money. But I'm enjoying yeah. it because it's all right. about like AI and like the vex and it's this is my type of season i'm really enjoying it on sunday sunday so saturday my daughter we we went about an hour and a half away she was she's on the gymnastics team we went and spent a night in a hotel and there's an indoor pool and a hot tub and my um it was my kids you would have thought it was fucking Christmas that there was an indoor pool. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And then like one of my daughter's gymnastics team members were there. They had so much fun in the pool. Like I actually like, I met the gymnastics parents, the gymnastics kids, parents, and the dad was pretty cool. We got to talking, you know, it was, it was a really like cool experience. Like took my kids like right in the parking lot. There was a Chili's. Oh, nice. I haven't been to fucking Chili's in years. Chili's Let me tell you, pretty good for like, of, but, of the like but, chains and but, stuff. But bro, Let me tell you, those chicken fajitas are still fucking fire. They are in 2022. Yeah. Okay, like you can't screw up a fajita. They're no. always pretty good. And the only de- okay, so can I give you the gripe of Chili's? Okay, they gave me five tortillas. I could have had six fajitas. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they didn't give me any extra tortillas, but. Their chips and salsa free to the table was primo. That's nice. But anyway, so I had an awesome weekend. My daughter kicked fucking ass. She placed first on the floor, second place on the vault, fourth and fourth on the beam and the bars, which beam is her worst thing. She took second place overall. And let me tell you, when your kid wins something and like my daughter and I have a really special relationship 
like it's really special and like when she was walking back with my wife from like doing her thing you could see her head like bobbleheading trying to find me and when she did that kid fucking squeezed me and she's like dad i did it and i'm like fuck yeah kid you know what i mean and you tell her look at this is hard work you work hard you get results that's it it, it you're you know hard work could take three months for some things or content creation i'm gonna quote stay alive stay alive stream for five years till he made the partner mark five years committed to streaming like knew someday it was going to go somewhere and now five years later or six years later he's a full-time content creator you know what i mean wow yeah like he's not going to his job anymore his career he gave it up so to chase this dream and he's pushing forward you know what i mean so like hard work pays off as David Goggins says, stay hard, motherfucker. <laughs> so anyway, exactly. I was supposed to do the dungeon Saturday, but we ended up doing it Sunday. It's like spire of this two fucking cares. Shoot the bad man. Whatever. So <laughs> I did it and I did it with Wabbit, uh, Master Wabbit and Caleb. Um, I had a complete blast. I what I'm realizing about Destiny and me is I'm not very good at the game and it's really evident because like, I feel like I'm still learning like the basic mechanics of the game where some of these people have been playing the game since destiny one first came out. So they get the verticality of it. They get the, you know what I mean? They get the mechanics of it where me, I'm still trying to learn how to like jump from place to place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like I was dying from jumping and they were just clearing the fights. You know what I mean? And I'm not upset about it because nobody's going to wait for me in that situation. But it was really fun. And I actually did it on my Warlock. I did not do it on my Titan. The reason why warlock. is because like, I have a build for my Warlock and I enjoy it. And like, I find myself... I played, I played the Warlock so much that like when I was playing the Titan, like I was hitting buttons and they weren't doing the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Cause you're expecting the warlock abilities. That's correct. Yeah. And I'm not saying that like, I'm not going to get the Titan to where I want it, but at the same time, like going into a dungeon for the first time, like I wanted to be the most ready that I could be. Yeah. So I took the warlock. Um, New warlock main is what you're saying. Then Marcus. <sighs> The Marlock is here so, to stay. The so, Marlock is here for the first clear. <laughs> um, I this week I'm gonna uh, I am going to build a uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm gonna build a uh, Titan build, and I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna decide. Maybe I will play Bar- Warlock. I I like it. I, I I don't know what else to say. You put you know. I hope I never have to play Hunter for a whole season because if I actually have to admit that I like the Hunter, I'm going to (laughs) fucking off myself. Anyways, um, two more things that I want to mention. Into the Spider-Verse trailer, like the new one, across the Spider-Verse. Across the Spider-Verse, yeah. Looks so fucking good. That is definitely my far my my favorite Marvel movie is into the Spider Verse one. I watched it last night with Nick and his dad. Yes, for guys' night, they never saw it. The fucking movie is so good. I've watched that movie so many times. I love it. It is a very good movie. I can't wait for the new one, June second or something like that. Yeah. Last thing is is you know I have been feeling burnout in Twitch. Yeah. Content creation. I've talked about it a bunch. But here's the thing I'm going to say. Twitch came out with this Twitch recap for the year, right? And it humbled me. You know what I'm saying? Like, switching to Destiny in February, the growth has been slow. The people that I've met have been unbelievable, but I measure everything off of growth. And I, again, I'm going to go back to chatters. Like when I played SWOTOR all the time, the chat was always fucking zooming. Right. Right. And coming to destiny, it really wasn't. And these people that I've met are so fucking awesome. And you lose sight of like how much you grow. 
But like, sure, I'm not growing like some other streamers where they're getting thousands of new followers a year. But you know what? I think I got 478 new followers this year, right? Like, yeah, that's awesome. That's a lot. That's a lot, right? Like, and it humbled me. You know what I mean? I right. did like. It just was humbling. I can't find the tab that shows my favorite streamers because I would really like to know that answer. Yeah. But I don't know where that tab is. Um, but I am going to find it because I want to know who I've watched the most. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is shout out to our fucking discord community. Like the yeah. discord community has grown so much. It's a lot. And there's always somebody saying something somewhere. And like, if I'm busy at work and I go to, I go to discord and there's like my, you know, the, the different channels are all white and I'm like, holy fuck. People have been busy. Even if it's just one message, it's like people are taking the time out of their day to go in it. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. The Twitch recap really humbled me on how I did this year. And I realized that slow growth is okay because it's some growth. And you have to decide what's important. Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyways, thank you, everybody. Nick, what have you been doing? So in stream, I'm obviously playing The Witcher 3. And right now, my next stream on Monday night will be my last stream playing The Witcher 3. Oh, thank God. So I wow. I, I, I I got to... So I've been saving, you know, wait, this building up, doing all the side quests because I, I wanted to get all the secondary quests done before I started that na- last, last quest. Um, I got to the point last stream where it asks you, hey... Once you do this, you can't go back. So like a lot of stuff is going to be locked off once you do this part in the story. Like the 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 message. I was like I hate that shit. Yeah, me too. But my I do like that there's I think there's a new game plus, but there's also um which is pretty cool. But there's also the DLC I haven't played yet. So at least there's then, a warning too. Yeah. And you don't they tell you like, you like go and then you're like oh shoot, now I now I can't. Yeah. Mass Effect did the same thing. Yeah. They're yeah. like, hey, if you yep. charge this, you can't pick up any more companions. You can't pass go. You cannot collect $200. You're in the end game. Right. Like, like yeah. there's no turning. And I like that. I like the warning, but the fact that that's a thing is frustrating for sure. But what's, right. what's, I do what, like to like go back yeah, and but, be able to do random stuff after. Well, no, you know? no, no. You can. Yeah. What they're saying is, is once you pass this point, certain you can't, stuff. Yeah. You can't do this point on. Yeah. You'll always be able to load from like then after you beat it and you load, it'll be at that point yeah. where you yeah. stopped unless you do new game plus. Right. And there's too many like I don't know who would actually do a new game plus right away. There's too many games to play. Yeah, that's that's Way me. I think I, I think I'm going to I mean, so I, I, I guess I'll just finish my point here. So. I did. There's a the the there's the hey point of no return message. Then there's a lot of stuff to do. It's not just like oh you're going to a battle. So like it's a big long quest, and that's what I did on the stream. But I mean I don't want to spoil the game, the end of the game if you haven't played it. But basically you're gearing up for a really big fight, and you go to a different place to gear up for the fight. It's the same as Mass Effect. Yeah, you gather your companions, you gear up for the big fight, and you're expecting the the the, the big bad enemies to come. So I I. The, there's the point of return then there's a big quest to do a bunch of other stuff and then you go to the place where you know the fight's going to happen and you're gearing up and you're like okay hey the fight's gonna happen like tomorrow morning essentially so i that's right where i saved is like hey we're at the place the fight's gonna happen and that's where i was like all right uh i'm already 20 minutes streaming longer than i'm should like next stream i'm just gonna finish the game it's gonna be great so next stream is gonna be like all action all drama it's the end of the game you'll get to see like which ending I get because I think there's a few in The Witcher where like certain things happen based on your choices. I hope I got the good ending because I got a lot of people. I was able to recruit a lot of help for the fight. So, so yeah, I cannot wait for this game to be over. I'm I'm interested, and then I think and then my next game is gonna be God of War on the PS4. God of War Ragnarok, I should say. PS5. PS5. Yeah. PS4. Via check. via Here. the old uh, four thousand. Via I've, the old. I've never played God of War, and somebody in my community. 
bought the first one for me on PC. Oh, dude. Like, it's amazing. That's awesome. I haven't played it yet, but it's because he knows I've never played one. He's like, dude, you have to. And it's like, I think it's a remaster or something. I don't know. It is. Yeah. It's, it's even more mm-hmm. aged. It looks way better on your PC. That's how I played it, too. Yeah, the I'm first one I, I played on um, on PC. It was. It's incredible. Looking forward to highly, that. Highly recommend it. it. It's it's beautiful. The combat flows very really nicely. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And I also um, like the narrative. Like the story content is really good as well. So like, and it's a nice balance of like, if you want to do the side content, you can. But if you want to just kind of do stick to the story, you can also do that. Um, I I, I think that game is really well crafted. It's it's fantastic, but. Um, so yeah, so oh, also what I want to talk about is the next gen update for The Witcher 3 came out like yesterday. So, which is perfect timing for oh, me to finish awesome. it. <laughs> so huh. I, I downloaded the update, so it's gonna be all super mega HD um for Damn. the last the last stream. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's a reason for me to go back because I've only played like a couple hours of it, dude. Oh yeah, The Witcher yeah, 3 is same great. here. I didn't know they, they did a remaster. Too. I'll fucking they, check it out. They, yeah, they just did it just came out yesterday. So if you bought the game already, you just can update it? Is that yeah, it's that free. Is? Fuck mm-hmm. yeah, dude. That's awesome. That's the shit. Uh, CD Projekt Red does it right, except for obviously Cyberpunk. That that was a giant. They spirit. tried, man. Just the they launch. Fucking, good, they, man. Sh- they should have fucking just had it for next gen with Cyberpunk. Okay. And then everything would have been fine, probably. Yeah, yeah well, it would have helped a lot, I feel like. But, uh, but yeah, like Marcus and I mentioned earlier, I finally watched Into the Spider-Verse. Personally, this is kind of a funny story. I have not. I have tried to watch that movie, meaning I went on Amazon Prime Video and clicked the rent button. I paid the two ninety nine, and have watched thirty to thirty five minutes of it, and then got distracted by something or another and not finished it, and then go back and it's like, oh, the rental expired. Like at least five times I've did that. I've done that. So you could have <laughs> bought the movie by now. A hundred percent. That's funny. So like, I, and every time I go, do I'm like, no, I got time. It'll be fine. I'm going to, I'm going to watch it. And, or either I fall asleep or I was watching it with a, a female friend and uh, other things happened and I got distracted mm-hmm. and didn't finish the movie. Or like, I like get a call from Marcus. He's like, Hey, can you come hold a cabinet for me? And I wouldn't do that or whatever. Random things happen I'll, for all different reasons. But I started that movie like five times and I finally sat down and watched the whole thing last last night for guys day and it's a it's a great movie which is not new news but um now i'm really it makes me really motivated to like see the the sequel that's coming out and the trailer just came out um also i've been playing a good so i have the ps5 which i got to play god of war ragnarok which you got it at a deal and i did get it at a deal shout out to you and a tracks for peer pressuring and finding the deal for me yay um and i bought i was like you know what? I feel like playing some soccer because I've been watching the World Cup. So I bought FIFA 23, which was only 30 bucks, by the way. It was like on sale on the PlayStation Store. So I feel like that was like decent, decent bang for your buck because I would $60 for that game, in my opinion, is not worth it. But like, no, nope. I think 30 ish sounds fairly reasonable. Yeah. Um, I just like the career mode a lot. I don't really do the ultimate team or anything like that. Um, I just like making myself and then putting me on Liverpool as like a attacking midfielder and i just it's like cool to go score goals and stuff but um it's been a nice casual game to to like get a little bit of competitive fix but like it's i can just hop in play for 20 minutes and then leave like i played like the other day um on my lunch break at work i just came home and played for a little bit or like even before work i did as well um so that's been fun uh and i have some some nerdy news for interested so some dc extended universe which is now called the dc universe news so i don't know if you saw but about a month ago uh well first of all spoilers for the movie black adam with a rock so there is there is press that came out and said before that movie came out uh with the rock and black adam at some convention and he said something to the effect of like is superman someone asked him if superman's going to be in the movie in Black Adam. And he said something to the effect of like, well, it depends on who's playing Superman. And everyone's like, hmm, because th- at that time it was ambiguous as to who's going to play if Henry Cavill was coming back or not. Then a little later, which is a, about a month ago now, the, st- the studios tell Henry Cavill, hey, you're going to come back as Superman. So like, please pr- promote that and like say, hey, um, you know, tell everybody, hey, I'm, I'm back as Superman. Let's make it a big PR thing. And then Henry Cavill was in the, the post credit scene in Black Adam as Superman. So 
he comes out this big release. Oh my God, Henry Cavill is going to be in, going to be Superman again. This is great. Henry Cavill quits The Witcher because he's get to make time for playing Superman in these movies that they're going to come out with. Fast forward to this week, they fought DC or Warner Brothers fires the head of the DC universe and hires someone else and James Gunn, who did Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad, to be in charge of all of the DC universe. And now that creative direction is that they're not doing anything with the other DCU movies at all. So, like, they canceled Wonder Woman 3. Actually, that's a false. They came out today and said Wonder Woman 3 is not canceled. Oh, well, there was new... Okay, well, that's as of yesterday, that was canceled. Today, no, I guess it's today. not. Oh. But... <laughs> <laughs> they they thought Gal Gadot was going to be out. Uh, I thought Aquaman 2 was canceled, and they said maybe Jason Momoa will play a different character in the DC universe. But then they also said, a, I think it was today or yesterday, that Henry Cavill, although he just said a month ago that he was going to be Superman, is no longer going to be Superman. They're, the studio told him to promote it last month, and now that J- there's new people running it, James Gunn, he's, he's out, and he's totally out. So the way uh, the article that I read today said that they're going to go for a younger Superman. Yeah, they're going to go for like a freshy, fresh Superman. That's like 20 Clark Kent, the reporter, and then presumably make like nine movies and you'll watch that actor age. But it's tough, man. Henry Cavill's a great dude. And like it's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty shitty to like flip flop like that. You know what I mean? Well, I think that I, I get it. And I also on the on the flip side, like. My initial reaction is like it's fucked up that like you were you can't get your story together, you know what I mean? Like you can't make it work based on what you already have. Like I feel like having The Rock as a big character is cool, having Henry Cavill's a great actor and super he's a super nerdy dude and like really cares about the characters. Yeah, but I so, also believe that guess what? The there's new studio heads and James Gunn is probably like, look, if I'm going to do this, I'm doing it my way. I'm doing it my way and I'm going to cast people that I want. You're not going to tell me that I have to have Jason Momoa or or Gal Gadot or, or, or Henry Cavill or whatever. Henry Cavill, whoever that is. Like, that was, I want my own people. That was going like, to be my I want. I want to get the girl that played Harley Quinn and Batman Beyond because Ma- that is Margot the real. Robbie. Yeah, that is the real Harley Quinn. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I can respect that too from on the flip side of it saying, looking like if I'm James Gunn and I'm selfishly speaking, trying to make the most successful movie franchise I can, I'm going to say, nope, I'm starting from scratch. I'm doing everything exactly the way I want to do it. I'm yes. telling the stories I want to yes. tell to guarantee that this is the best product I can possibly produce. Yes. So I can respect that. But it is as not being that guy, right? Like, just a fan watching the stuff like man i did like these things you know i just wish yep. you had these great actors in better movies you know like I, gal gadot as wonder woman was fantastic in wonder woman and then that and then wonder woman 1984 was complete dog shit so it's like which is not gal gadot's fault that character's cool but like i just wish we could see though that set of cast and characters well in better content you know you know i think <sighs> ben affleck as batman was pretty cool too i, I like Robert Pattinson's better. That's a different, totally different art style, but still, I'm just saying. I just think that outside influences influence certain decisions for movies and too often. Too often, and they force things that don't need to be forced, and because of it, the movies end up bad. Yeah, I think that was like the the idea of Wonder Woman 1984 was fucking awesome, but some of the shit that they put in it, it was just like it didn't need to be there right See? i think i think that's the narrative too is was patty jenkins had like a script and was like and wrote it and it was all it was good and then so the studio executives changed everything and fucked the whole movie up yeah and i think that was part of the story about one woman three was she was like presented it to james gunn and they, they didn't agree she's like right well i'm out because i'm not doing that again right and that's why they were that was initially kind of canceled but anywho that's uh that's it for me do you like Star Wars The Republic? Yes. Do you like Destiny 2? Uh, yes. Yes. Do you like World of Warcraft? Yeah. Atrax does. Do you like Guild Wars 2? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Do you like Lord of the Rings Online? Absolutely. Do you like Final Fantasy 14? I've sure. heard of that game. If you do, then <laughs> AIE is the place for you. We have a guild calendar uh, on our guild website, and every single night of the week, there's something fun to do with the guild. I don't care what you want to do. There's somebody doing something in 
all of the major game uh, divisions that we have. I'm telling you, if you want to have fun, then AIE is the place for you. And speaking of fun, if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. Get our Discord information, which you can find in the top right-hand corner of the website. Click that big purple button and ask for a guild invite. Whether or not you play Star Wars Old Republic, Destiny 2, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, Lord of the Rings Online, Final Fantasy 14, Pokemon, Call of Duty, whatever it is, we play it too, and we would love to have you. All right, so we've been talking for just about two hours. I know Nick has to pee. I definitely do. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So today we're talking with Stone Dog Entertainment. And of course, we have some questions. First and foremost, uh, I want to ask. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say something, but I saw Marcus do the, the answer is no. No, do, the, ahead, sorry. do the <laughs> me first. I want to say something. No, no, no. What is your favorite game of all time? Halo. Oh. Halo. The original? The original Halo. Oh, that was fucking quick. All right. Combat evolved. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when the flood comes and surprises you in that game. And oh if you don't God. know what I'm talking about, go fucking play the first Halo game. Especially the remastered version. There's no excuse for anybody not to fucking play goddamn Halo. It's on Game Pass. Go do it. I'm yeah. With you. Totally agree. That's a, that, that moment is awesome. If you got it, like you gotta. If you appreciate the story, then everything else makes sense except for fucking. I think Halo Five, where they kind of fell off for a second, but it's fine. It was still. I was. I still played it. Yep. Yeah. So I, then, all I'm gonna say is, Halo Three and Halo Reach were the pinnacle. But great. believe it or not, my favorite, uh, my favorite Halo game is ODST. It's a good game, man. The the yeah. the. My favorite, no, see, there's favorite Halo game. Favorite music in a game is actually Halo 3 because I, I went through a really hard time when that game came out. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you go through a hard time and like a game is like your escape. Yeah, And totally. that game was my escape. So when I hear that menu music, it still puts me right back in that place. And it's like, it's such emotional, like really beautiful orchestra, like music. It's just fucking, like I'm thinking about it now, I can almost go back to it. It's just like, every time I hear it, it just fucking puts me right back there. And it's not a sad memory. It's not bad. It's like, it just makes me appreciate that game for like getting me through that time. It's fucking yeah. weird how games can make you feel like that. But yeah. I game think I, music too. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like the fallout games, I get some of some of that feeling, you know, borderlands for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Texas. like any, any, a game that you've really like escaped into, mm-hmm. you know, a hundred percent. I'm with you. It's like comfort food, comfort gaming. Mass yeah, Effect was exactly. The same way too. Mass yeah. Effect's really. I'll hear music now that's from a Mass Effect game that I remember that I forgot, right? But it's like in some yeah. clip on a YouTube channel. I'm like, holy shit! What? Oh, that's fucking Mass Effect. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For so, me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. So, Halo is your favorite game. Then, would you say you're a console gamer, or overall, would you lean towards PC? Like not obviously not your favorite, but just overall gaming PC or console for you. If you could pick one, I mean console and not because I don't like PC. It's just, that's just normally what I do. And that's your vibe. Yeah. And I fucking like, I grew up on consoles. I will play PC games, but I like my PC primarily is used for streaming and editing and music creation. That's all I fucking do on my PC. Right. Really? I mean, I have a few games, but that's it. So, I'm with you. Um, so could you take us through if we go in the way, 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 way back machine? I know you touched on it a little bit, it being the pandemic. But tell us how you started or why you started streaming on Twitch. Uh, well, I started streaming because I needed to record my wrestling matches and I didn't have a uh, capture card. So I okay. used Twitch as a way to record that. And then I had some people from my YouTube channel would hop over to my Twitch just to like, not a lot, just a few. And then they would, I would not, I would not tell people when I was going live with a match and I would fucking just go live and try to make sure nobody was in there. And then these motherfuckers would get in there and it would frustrate me because I didn't want to see who won. Right. Right. Cause the whole thing was, it was a dream match and I was trying to be like, ah, but I was, that was me being frustrated. Cause I didn't know how fucking, I didn't fucking know anything. I yeah. knew, I knew video because I was, um, I was a musician, all that shit. And then I got a job uh, 
working for Logic Systems in Missouri, and it's mm -hmm. a production company. And at the time, like half the time we're doing concerts and like big festivals and shit. Half the time we're fucking doing corporate events. So I knew nothing about video really except for just from video games. But when I got that job, it's like it's a lot of, you know, figure out how to make this video signal work. And not only that, now you're going to fucking take this LED wall and build it. Now you're going to fucking map it, right? Now you're going to fucking yeah. – now this this client needs you to put a picture in picture here, and then fucking you're going to have the graphics up here, and then you're also going to run all this on the wall behind it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what I did before, and then I also directed – uh, cameras at shows so like sometimes my favorites were like when i got to do rock music of course that's my that's fucking awesome festivals the couple times i got to do those the big ones were fucking awesome yeah i've, I've been able to direct cameras for fucking stevie wonder before wow. i've done fucking uh stone temple pilots fucking shine down uh the, when they released devil they were watching me all day their crew was there saw the work i'd been doing at carolina rebellion and their manager came to me and said hey we're cool with you calling the show tonight. Just we want you to catch the fireworks at the end. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, just wait. And it was one of the coolest moments ever. Like, so That's I've done cool. all that kind of stuff and I'm super proud of that. But the thing is like, like I said before, I've always, it's not that I need a spotlight. I just want to be successful and feel like I'm getting somewhere. And I've called some of the biggest show, like a perfect circle. One time I got to call one of their shows and I went to Taco Bell after, and it's not that I need attention, but like nobody knew who, who I fucking was. Nobody would ever know who the fuck I was. Yeah. Like I wanted to do something more, and I've always wanted that. And I didn't know how. So I'm getting somewhere with this. When the fucking pandemic happened, I was on a tour bus with uh, doing a couple El Monstero shows, which is this Pink Floyd cover band from St. Louis, and they're fucking incredible. They, I built their LED walls like for their shows, and they would change every year, and they were just fucking crazy like i'm i'm not just saying you guys should look up el monstero because they're nuts but this went the entertainment industry ground to a fucking halt like yeah that so i yeah. am not a person who like and again not it's, it wasn't political with me it was the fact that okay i'm i'm in a business in a company doing something where i don't get days off dude like yeah i don't get yeah. weekends off it's always doing something, whether it's fucking warehouse, because I also worked up to where I was running the video department. So it's always fucking doing something to when that happened. I was on a tour bus and they said, hey, we can't go to the next city because they're they're shutting down Kansas City. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, we can't go there. So we turn around the tour bus and I got off that bus. And I remember I worked a couple more shows after that, but it was at our warehouse. We had people come in like companies came to a warehouse and we shot stuff. Yeah. And I left one day and I fucking had a tear in my eye because I'm just like, I fucking knew that it wasn't going to be the same, at least for a while. And but, yeah. And I was like, I can either sit here and I can just, you know, collect a check and I can fucking do nothing and wait for things to get back. Yeah. Or I can take this opportunity to try and figure out how I could possibly make a career out of this. And I had zero expectation. I thought I would. I say it all the time, but I mean it. I was surprised anybody watched me. I don't think of myself as the most fucking attractive person or the most fucking like magnetic person to everyone, but I am very confident that I can draw a niche group. And yeah, to me, it just was like having the time and putting the effort in, like Marcus was saying, like, you know, actually, and with me, I'm very regimented. So I come from doing band practices and stuff all the time. I come from being scheduled, you know, um, so it's the streamer thing. Like when I looked at it, I was just like, okay, set a schedule, do that, work on getting better at content. And that's just what I fucking focused on. So long answer there for you, but that's, it kind of all just happened. And when I, when I looked at OBS, like the reason I fucking am able to do a lot of this shit too, like the reason I edit stuff so fast, the reason I'm just fucking, I'm a crazy motherfucker when it comes to making shit. And I can fucking do it like that. I just can. And I'm not, I, I'm not fucking bragging. It's just what I fucking do. So yeah, people yeah. don't get that. Like that didn't come from nothing. The fact that I can make one, a song in six hours on stream completely done is not because it just happened. The fucking me opening up OBS and understanding scenes and how to place cameras and all that shit that didn't just happen. That was the fact that I've spent my entire life getting good at all these things that really didn't do much for me. So all of a sudden you make all those things work into this. Right. Yeah. You know, it was complete fucking accident, dude.
like to be, to be honest with you. And then here we are, you know, two years later and I have, I started a Patreon and I'm not on, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not fucking, Oh, I'm balling. Cause I ain't, but yeah. I've survived some pretty tough times in this community is like, like I said, has stepped up and been like, no dude, we want to see this shit. Let's fucking go. And I specifically, a few of my patrons were like, let's fucking take this to the moon. That was their direct fucking message. And I have people reaching out to me being like, dude, this is not just cause this is because I really enjoy your content. Like I, I want to see this succeed. And that's, that's why I keep doing it too. You know? Hell yeah, man. So then following along the stream line just a little bit, what would you say your favorite stream moment is if you have one? Or you can also give like, a, a, what we call it a Mount Rushmore, like, you know, a couple oh, short cliff notes of great moments. I'll give you right. one. I'll give you one. Um, so, I mean, I told you guys earlier about the stuff my family went through and everything. Recently, yeah. And just how... I didn't know what was going to happen, but uh, one thing that is about me is that, and it's just like any any guy or any person, it doesn't have to be a guy, any person that just fucking cares about what they do and them, themselves. Like, no matter what I had to do, everything was going to be okay, so it wasn't that. This whole situation was the fact that, like, my, my wife's former boss totally fucking took advantage of her, and for me, it was more so, it wasn't about me, it was really about her. I wanted her to be yeah. I don't like it when people fuck with my wife, obviously. And I, I actually got on the phone with this motherfucker, and I'm pretty sure he won't fucking be doing anything again. But it's not like it was physical. It was emotional. He's yeah. He's used to cornering women and being rude to them, and he's never had somebody that he doesn't pay fucking call him and say, hey, you piece of shit. Fuck right. you. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So his, his dig at me was that, well, maybe you wouldn't be in this situation if you didn't do what you do for a living. And I'm just like, dude, like that's your solution after all this stuff. We bring this to your attention. We planned our lives around your plan here. And right. your solution is to not only do what you did to her, but then insult me personally. Right. Like, you're fucking delusional, bro. Yeah. And so, like, for me, I don't get, and I think it is part of being in the past couple of years, and I'm not going to fucking act like I need a medal for this, and I don't want sympathy for it either. Found out I'm on the spectrum, right? Yeah. Part of that for some people is the fact that, like, people don't get, I don't need your fucking approval. It doesn't bother me what you think about what I'm doing. What I'm getting at, and I'm leading somewhere here for this paramount moment, is this, all these things, and lots of other things happen too. I mean, she lost the diamond in her wedding ring, dude. Same week. Ugh. Um, Fucking, we got COVID. Rip like, that guy. Just fucking boom, 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 boom. And you know what? And then fucking all of a sudden it's like, she wants me to keep doing this, but I didn't know if I could. Yeah. So I have a wrestling show twice a week and i write stories and i put a lot to the promos and what they say and i had no expectations i didn't know what was going to happen but it was like a, i think it, the week before last i was just in the moment and i wrote this promo right this like what my character says and he comes out and he says something to, to the audience and it was just really like dude it it built into um just the fact that nothing Nothing that's happened is going to stop me because I'll get through it, right? It's more yeah. so just the fact that I'm a little bit nervous because for the first time, you know, I got to tell you guys that, like, this channel and what this show might not continue if we don't meet our goals. But, you know, like, the whole premise is, like, when your back's against the wall, you can either sit down and cry about it or you start fucking swinging. And I'm going to choose to start fucking swinging, right? So that's what I'm going to fucking do. And I took it out of my opponent, who's actually a real pro wrestler, Jay Lethal. He's a friend of mine. He's in the show as well, so that kind of gets muddy, right? Yeah. But I, I, I directed everything in my life towards this fucking thing. And I was just like, you know what, Jay? When I see you on December 23rd, I'm not going to see you standing across the ring. I'm going to see you and every other motherfucker that hasn't done what they told me they were going to do in my lifetime. I'm like, you show up that day, you're getting your fucking ass beat. And like, <laughs> just like, you have to go back and watch what I actually said. But in this moment, I get raided by a friend who was, and I don't, I don't think it's great. And I'm not bashing her either because she's a true friend of mine. I know that's why she does it. But I have a friend of mine that watches my show even if she's streaming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She fucking raided me when this happened, and my my audience was already there, and then all of a sudden, and it's not the fact that it was bits. It's not the fact that it was subs. And it's not, it, the thing was, too, it wasn't a sad thing, guys. This was me just being fiery. I feel like this lit a fucking fire. And all of a sudden, like, 
everything in my life changed from that fucking moment. And it's not like I haven't been this way. It's just like it woke me up again. And I told my wife, I'm like, you know what? This whole fucking situation's done is just lit a fucking fire. Like, everybody better hope and fucking pray that I don't keep succeeding at what I do. Because we are going to take control of our life and we're going to fucking do this, you know? And on the, like, after the little made-up promo was over, like, you can see me and I'm, I'm went back to the camera and I'm just like, that's exactly why, like, you're going to have to fucking take this shit from me. You're going to have to fucking work harder than you've ever fucking worked in your life to stop Stone Dog Wrestling because I am not, and this community is not fucking going down without a fight. And it's just like the energy was just so, it was like you could feel it. And Hell I don't yeah. know if it's just me, I don't know, but I know some people in my community did, and it's changed stuff in my life, it's changed stuff for me, and that's what I'm saying. It's not just me, it's the fucking people that have confidence in me. It's the... Like I said, it's the choosing to fight when you could fucking fall, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah. So, Absolutely. That's the paramount moment. I'm sorry I'm fucking rambling tonight. That was great. Oh, don't ever apologize for, for talking a lot on a podcast. It's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point is we want to hear we want to hear what you have to say. Take your time and articulate yourself. It's fucking awesome. I yeah, sent, that was I, I sent it to Jay. So Jay Lethal is a buddy of mine from AEW, and this is another thing that's great about streaming. This guy fucking found me playing Star Wars one night. He's a fucking real, legit, active... He's a tag team champion right now on All Elite Wrestling, on fucking TBS and TNT, okay? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is big fucking shit. He still keeps in contact with me. Like, I still talk to him. Like, I've made stuff for his stream. I'm gonna mod for him, like, when he comes back, but he's, like, a really fucking cool dude, and that's, like, I even sent him this shit, and I'm, like, dude... And I don't cheese dick with him either. I'm not sending him every, oh, Jay, check this out. You know what I mean? But I'm like, dude, you should check this out because for real, th that was like, and I don't know. I mean, you guys stream, you know what I'm talking about. Have you ever, and I'll ask you guys this question. That's the first time really that I really was, that was me. Like, I mean, like it's always me, but like that was the most soul bearing shit ever to just be like, and that energy that was there when I was like, I'm not fucking stopping. This is what I'm going to fucking do. I'm taking control of this. And if I go down, I'm going down in a fiery fucking ball, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Have you yeah. ever just had it just, uh, everything was just building and you just had to be honest with your community. Cause that's the first time. And that's why I showed Jay. I'm like, it's the first time I've used my wrestling show as a, as a fucking outlet, you know? Yeah. It's usually yeah, just a you story, have to. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. For a moment like that for me wasn't like like being that passionate about something. It wasn't in stream for me, but I know exactly what you're talking about. I think I, I yep. will. I don't want to go down too much of a sidebar because I want to get back to our questions. But yeah, for me, I think it was a moment in paintball. I was playing against Penn State and I like kind of put the team on my back, which I don't typically do. It's not my role, but back in the day I did and we won the match. Nice. But, um, but yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Like that moment of like, no, fuck you. I'm going to get this done. Like you better get out of my way. If you're trying, if you're not on, if you're not on board, get off the train. Yeah. You know, ride or die. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been going through a lot of that recently and I've been honest with a lot of people and I've just been like not being a dick and I'm not coming at you sideways, but you know, yeah. Pub and these are people that are involved with my stream and help out with stuff. I'm just like, I appreciate what you do, but this is what I need going forward. And I'm not, not asking you for anything more than what you said, but this is what I need because this is serious time, you know? Absolutely. And Absolutely. A hundred percent. So yeah. that's like, that's a great moment. Um, yeah. I have a, I have a frivolous question. Good. So, well, it's not, it's, it's not frivolous, but we like to yeah. sprinkle a couple of these in to like break the, the intensity of the questioning. So we have two of them. Uh, and the both of them tell a lot about us. This one's a little lower stakes, but it does tell us a lot about you. The question is, what is your or who is your favorite Star Wars character in all of the Star Wars content that exists? What, who's your favorite? Uh, Luke Skywalker. That's a great answer. That's a great wait, one. Wait, have we had a Luke Skywalker answer? I don't think so. We've got Obi Wan a lot and Anakin, but I don't think we've ever had a Luke Skywalker. Dude, when that fucking when I forget which one, and I am a Star Wars fan, but I'm not like a Okay, I really like Star Wars, and I have seen just about every single movie. Like, I've okay. seen all the base movies, but I'm not I, – I differentiate when I say this because I don't want to insult – and I'm serious. I don't want to insult people that, like, are true fans because I don't fucking know every goddamn character. <laughs> but I've watched it all, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. whenever Luke Skywalker came back and – oh, man. Whichever man the one everybody – Mandalorian. No, when he came back in, no. Uh, no, it was the fucking movie with oh, uh, the Last uh, Jedi. Last Jedi. Yes, dude, I was 
fucking out of my seat cheering. I was like, let's fucking go. When he's fucking standing there and every fucking body is shooting at him and it ain't fucking doing nothing. I'm just like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. Ah, I fucking loved it so much. I'm sorry. More. I'm more. No, no, more. And it's, it's just so cool. Yeah. And then they realize what it is, but it's just, God damn it. He's so fucking awesome. Luke Skywalker is, will always be the shit to me. I fucking love, I love his conflict. I love his character. I love everything. Uh, I totally understand that. Mo- that is a very cool moment. I will agree. Uh, I hated that movie overall, but that, <laughs> that movie was that, that one, that moment is fucking awesome. Totally get, agree. Yeah. Uh, a track. Do we want to give? I feel like every time we ask this question, we have to give the obligatory quick version of our store of our favorite characters. The thing is, Nick, is <laughs> our answers are fast. Yours are never not because you give the entire novel explanation. It's like it takes me like forty seconds to say the whole thing. It's not that long. That's pretty long. All right, Marcus, I'm go. Favorite character: R two D two. Okay, A tracks. A tracks. One. <sighs> See. Really all right see how fast that is That's let's awesome. go all right darth bane <laughs> is the one that darth bane's who i say every time he's at a, uh, all right cool yeah, so, see, so, yeah. all right so <laughs> and, and, and if you want to know who darth bane is there's the google <laughs> yeah you, um, can, you can read the books they're pretty great they are great go ahead um so who's your favorite wrestler of all time uh <laughs> sean michaels all right that's great. a great one yeah, Why do you think you gravitate towards towards Shawn Michaels? Uh, because um, he was un- he was smaller, and whenever when the original Degeneration X came out, and I was like prime 12, 13 years old, and I'm talking about when Triple H and Shawn Michaels in China were DX for wrestling nerds, you know what I'm talking about. Um, he just he was on pills. He was fucking nuts. Like legit, he was on pills. Like people now that I know because I've heard the stories were taking him to venues and having to make sure he didn't die at night. And I get that that's bad. I'm not saying, oh, that's so cool. But I find it really interesting what comes out of people artistically when they're at their fucking end. Like Nine Inch Nails is one of my favorite bands too because Trent Reznor wrote some albums when he was so fucked up on heroin he couldn't fucking do anything. And I'm not, yeah. of course, I'd never do it. I would beat my friend's ass if they did it. I've had friends pass away from it. I'm not trying to make light of that. I'm yeah. just saying that, for example, I really find it fascinating artistically what comes out of people because I feel like when you are at that point and you're so high on your own shit and you're really good though, yep. there's like this line where the best – fucking shit ever comes out of you and it's just eminem is my my vibe i get that and pc and like and the thing about it is it's like yes that person is completely obnoxious and a fucking asshole and yes they are really shouldn't say what they're saying but they did and it's done and you just I don't know. It's like a moment in time you can't ever replicate that's in their life. And they, you know, and they'll go on regretting it. Like Shawn Michaels hates who he was when he was younger, but that's why it's because of his attitude. And because he was so goddamn good that nobody could fucking do anything about it. Like it's just Mike Tyson (laughs) is another one of those that now like, Oh yeah. You watch pot, you hear podcasts, his podcast and everything like that, where he's just, he's mellowed out uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can I go on a quick, quick sidebar about mike tyson yeah. you know his backstory so like not he, he, all of it he, so the i'll give you the quick version which will actually be quick i'm marcus is giving me the evil eyes but the no not at all <laughs> so basically mike tyson did not really have parents and he was raised by his boxing trainer and his boxing trainer okay. happened i'm totally i'm probably paraphrasing too much and screwing up a little bit of the details but essentially his boxing trainer was also a hypnotherapist and he would literally hypnotize Mike, who is like this impressionable, you know, kid who uh, obviously has unbelievable boxing talent, but just hypnotize Mike to just destroy. It's like, kill. You are a killer. You destroy everything is in front of you. No matter what happens, you fucking destroy. That's what you are. Iron Mike yes. Tyson is from like, I don't even know what age, but like young and impressionable through, you know, 19 years old or whatever he was when he was the heavyweight boxing champ. It's like you destroy. Right. So that's what he did. He went to the ring and he was ruthless. And just, just obviously knocked people out. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest yeah. of all time. But like, well, I get what you're saying. Like you have to reach those other, those outside of, of regular human like capabilities. Like you have to have be in situations where 
you you can reach outside of what is normally like uh, uh the human brain is capable of whether you're in a terrible spot emotionally or using drugs or like hypnotized like that from Mike Tyson that's where you get those outlier peoples or outlier you know creativity wise like in in music or whatever it might be mm -hmm. it's interesting and, like what the human body and brain is capable of, of producing and under, you're like in those under those stress. extreme circumstances yeah. yeah and even without drugs you got like my greatest hero of all time is michael jordan oh yeah and it's, exactly it's because yep. and it's not i mean no you won the championships and shit but dude like look at okay i relate to like and i'm not saying i'm the best player on every fucking team you know but like yeah, he drove people, and when you were on his team, he expected you to fucking bring it. A hundred percent. Fucking bring it. He was like, "You're not fucking bringing it today. What the fuck are you doing?" And right. he, but at the same time, this motherfucker would be sick and go out and score fifty four points. This guy would fucking right. be hurt and play. This guy would fucking like he would figure out a way. That's what I'm saying. Like he's another one of those guys that's so good that even when you hear people that talk about him now, they'll still give him respect, even though like yeah, he was a dick. He made fun of me every day, but we won championships. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, there's so. a I, I saw a cool story about Mike Jordan today. Actually, it was it was somebody from like Charlotte. Uh, I'm not a basketball fan, so forgive me. But whatever the the pro team that Mike like has a ownership in, he it was like some star on that team. They were sucking, and like fifty something year old Michael Jordan comes into the locker room and goes, "All of you, take off your Jordan gear. Give me back." So oh like, my yeah. god! Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Give me all. I give remember me all, hearing about that. Yeah, give me give all me, your shoes. Give me all your. I'll give me. A, give me your shoes. Take everything that's Michael Jordan brand off. Put this other shit on. Like whatever yeah. it is. If you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. And he goes. And I was like, I was like, uh, just to prove my point, I'm gonna suit up with the second squad today. And they and this Michael Jordan like fifty something with this bench players from that team beat the starters in practice. I love it. And, and that's like hilarious. you fucking suck. Stay hard, <laughs> motherfucker. You can exactly. only you can only do yeah. it and see. But at the same time, you got to understand where he's coming from. And I'm not saying I know Michael Jordan, but here's right. an example. Um, I've been in the studio before. There's been th three different times. One time was a guitar player. One time was a drummer and another guitar player. And they would be like playing a part. And I'm like, you're not doing that right. Like you need to like. And they're and they're like, oh, well, if you can do it, then you do it. And I'm like, okay. And I'll go in there and I fucking do it. Yeah. Why? Because I came prepared and that's not my fucking fault. Don't be mad at me because you didn't fucking come prepared. That's not my, that's not personal. Right. That is not me digging at you. That is you yeah. obviously showing that you didn't put in the fucking time, my man. That's not personal. And if you can't take that as a man, then you shouldn't be fucking doing this. And I'm not, right. it's just fucking facts. And I don't talk like that to everyone, but also what people don't understand is that I talk like that to myself. Yeah. So I beat the shit Same out of myself standard. all the fucking time. And I'm not perfect as well, Listen, which makes it even worse. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I know I get what you're getting at, though. Like, it's not it's a results based mentality of like, look, is it is this happening? If it's not, then it's wrong. If and that is what it is. Yeah, If you say you're going to do something to me, it's very important that you do it. And yeah. if, you if you can't and you admit it, that's fine. If you say you're like, listen, I'm not getting this. That's fine. But if you commit to something and you don't do it to me, that's a big thing and that that crosses yeah. almost every every spectrum of life with me i yeah. don't care what it is just I, and you can you can you can have problems excuses and that's great but just don't be a liar and just be honest you know what i mean i don't know i'm total i'm totally with you uh i have another frivolous question for you good uh so <laughs> this one comes with a lot of judgment it depending on how you answer so there are Only many if many you answer wrong Exactly. There are many, many, many correct answers, but there is one singular wrong answer. And if you answer this way, we might have to kick you off the show. Okay. Okay. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, God. I close my eyes. <laughs> I don't even fucking eat much ice cream, bros. First okay. off. All right. Um, kick, him, kick him off the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I don't know. I think no ice cream is better than... <laughs> I think no ice cream is better than the wrong answer, quite frankly. <laughs> I mean, the only when when my wife goes to Sonic sometimes and gets me something. Okay. Yeah. Then I will have if I'm I have, if I'm getting ice cream, I will get the like the Oreo blast from Sonic. Okay. That's yeah, a great so answer. Like cookies and cream Oreo. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. It's a great that's answer. It's a great answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. 
<laughs> What's the wrong answer? I'm curious. Pistachio. pistachio. Oh, fuck pistachio. If you had pistachio <laughs> ice cream, go fuck yourself right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're invited back every week. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> That's nasty shit. Who puts nuts in your ice cream? That's oh, what I, okay. Man, and that's see, funny. so here's my opinion on it. Like, it's one thing to to like pistachio ice cream. That's one level of wrong, right? Like, I can wrap my brain around that if you like pistachio ice cream. But to say that pistachio ice cream is your favorite flavor of all the ice cream in the world is psychopathic. Yeah, something yeah, bad happened to them crazy. as kids. So, exactly. <laughs> Something's wrong with you. You see this paneling in my studio? They had that kind of paneling at their house. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which in the '90s and '80s, you know what that meant, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> something, ain't, something ain't right. Something's not. <laughs> yeah, they're getting spanked. Uh, all right, um, Atrax, what's our what's our second to last question? Or Marcus? Marcus is Marcus like, has. Can I get included in a while? Yeah. No, no, no. no it's fine. <laughs> I've just actually, been leading the charge. Yeah, I'm He's just still upset it. about the Destiny comments from me earlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's in um, a fog. What would you He's say the it. goals are for Stone Dog Entertainment? Uh, my goals right now are to... My goals are lofty. My goals are big this year, but I've decided that I want to be... Uh, my, my goal is not end all to be a Twitch partner, but I want it, and I want it this year. Um, I, all right. And again, it's I'm just saying it. I'm... Yeah. Okay. If it's too cocky, I'm done being, I'm done feeling bad for that because I don't care. I put in the work and I put in the, the time and if I'm not there yet, that's okay. But I, I believe I can do it. And beyond that, yeah. um, I want to, I want to develop my writing, get better at that. And I want stone dog entertainment to be eventually big goals is I want to get to the place where I have hundreds of thousands of people viewing my content that it's successful in a lot of different ways. And I want to have a 24 hour channel that is stone dog entertainment. So I am able to have one channel that never stops going live. I don't care if it's Twitch or whatever, but have a big enough audience. I don't care if it's worldwide or famous, just enough to make it work where I can pay some people that I like and care about to help me run mm -hmm. a channel and just have it be like a fucking TV channel. So I was gonna say like a TV network kind like, of like MTV yeah, used like to be, constantly. But with content and like with me, you know, streaming when I want to or Stone Dog Wrestling, whatever. Right. But have been like bringing up some people with me that eventually regular programming I can trust and put in different places. So no matter how long that takes, that is the overall goal for me someday. Yeah. So that's Hell awesome. Yeah. That's wicked awesome. Um, so we're going to ask you again at the end of the programming, but let people know where they can find you. Uh, Stone Dog Entertainment on YouTube, Twitch, um, Instagram, everything. If you, yeah, I mean, everywhere, yeah. everywhere you look, Stone Dog Entertainment. If you look up Stone Dog Entertainment, it's going to be me. Uh, and that's if you want to join, if you go to Patreon's website, you can find me that way. I mean, just Google Stone Dog Entertainment and everything's there. And I also have a link tree which you can find on all my channels too. And that is everything. Google Hell it, yeah. nerds. Speaking of nerds, well, it's time for working class questions. Yes. <laughs> all right. First up, DL Smooth asks, how young have you been a fan of wrestling? And what is your hope slash dream for yourself in the community in the future? Well, the second part we just answered. But so I guess uh, when did you first start watching wrestling is the question. From DL Smooth. Uh, my dad was a pastor, okay, which is a mm -hmm. weird way to start this. But on Saturday <laughs> nights, we would have he would have prayer meeting, and then after prayer meeting, uh, he would get these little like cream puff donut things. Like they're the, I don't know if you guys are talking about, but like yeah, yeah, devil's horns or something they call them, and, yeah, and yeah. fucking uh, or my mom would make breadsticks and fucking and whatever I'm getting. But then we would watch wrestling on Saturday nights. That's cool. And my brother would make fun of me because he was 12 years older than me, but I didn't yeah. care. And I was convinced it was real. <laughs> and so, and my grandma really liked it. And she would call, like she would record stuff for me. She would, she would call me because my mom wouldn't let me watch wrestling at home. Cause it was, she saw the nitro girls one time and she's like, uh, -uh I ain't happening again. So my grandma <laughs> would record it for me. And then she would call me, Sean Michaels is on the TV. Come on over. And I'd be like, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so awesome. it's, I've been watching it my whole life as far as I can remember. Yeah. Um, I have a similar story in a sense, but when, um, when I was a kid, we used to have Saturday morning, like recap as a kid. And my mom would have to go to the mall once a week and she would sit me in front of the TV and Sears 
and I would watch it for an hour. She'd ask the guy to put it on, and she would just disappear to the mall and leave me there watching the thing. I wouldn't move. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't yeah. get up because I was just glued to it. Mm-hmm. Never got bored. I just watched the commercials, and like I knew if I got up, I'd get my fucking ass kicked by my mom. But, yeah. <laughs> yep. um, you know. But yeah, that's awesome. Um, Master Wabbit says favorite heel, favorite face. Favorite heel and favorite face, man. Favorite heel would probably have to be, again, either Shawn Michaels or, or Ric Flair. Because Ric Flair is just Woo! amazing as a heel. Um, favorite face. That's an interesting question. Because all my favorites ch- seem to be kind of heels in the way. Yeah. I would say probably my favorite face is CM Punk when he's a good guy. Because... That dude is – he's another one of those people that's just like people I, I talk about. He just doesn't give a shit, and a lot of people hate him, and I'm not saying I think he's right about everything because I do think he's a fucking crabby old stuck in the mud some or stick in the mud sometimes. But he just fucking goes out and says shit that nobody else says, and it's just really fucking impactful, and he fucking means it. So probably CM Punk as a face and probably Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels as a heel kind of tied. That's Very great. Cool. Great answers. Uh, Tarquin asks, what's your favorite part of wrestling? Uh, the st- it, well, my favorite part are the stories, which is why I make my own show, because for the past couple of years, the stories have really fucking sucked. Um, Tony Khan really tries, and <laughs> for AEW, and this dude's doing amazing things for the wrestling, for all of us, by just his family dumping all this money and trying to provide a- another brand, and he's really really trying and he'll get there. Um, but WWE has just thrown storyline. I mean, out with garbage for fucking years. They're trying in the past year or two to get something going again. But my favorite part of wrestling is when you give a shit about the matches, because if you don't give a shit about what's going on, then you're just watching two people roll around in the ring. Then you are just watching a couple dudes in spandex. And I mean, like it's not, I'm not knocking that, but I'm like, to me, it is more than that. I mean, to me, yeah. it's I, in my show, almost every fucking match has a reason why it's happening. And I provide recaps after every show to YouTube as well. So you can keep up with it. You can go back and see there's a, you know, so people get invested. I have new people all the time that want to find out what's happening with this new character because there's something going on. But that's the fucking thing that they miss nowadays is that you have to make people care. You have to write a story that makes sense. People still care about that. That's what made money back in the day. It's not just the flips. I have no problem with the flips. I have no problem yeah. with the the fancy stuff. I think that's all awesome. And I just think that we need to like Tony Khan and Triple H and everybody just need to fucking have a storyline, have somebody go out there and get some wins, cause some conflict, get somebody interested in somebody focus on 10 people instead of 55 for a while, you know, yeah. like, you know what I'm right. saying? I don't know. Yep. Anyway, I'm rambling now again, but yeah, no, I totally, I'm with you. Uh, Kate Padizzle asks, <laughs> I think, uh, something we kind of already asked, but he's a mod of mine. Hello, Kate Padizzle. Kate Padizzle is awesome. Kate uh, uh KP, who is your favorite wrestler in general, and why is it Kevin Dizzy? Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> his character in Stone Dog Wrestling. Um, I will say, okay, so I already talked about kind of my favorite wrestlers, so let me do this. For my, for, my, for my fans, right, for my people, for my OGs, I will give you right now who is my favorite character in Stone Dog Wrestling. Okay. Okay. Hmm, and I really have to think because I never thought about this before, but I will try to fucking make it quick here. Take your time. Um, so as far as development, there's a guy that I'll just give it to the T. Um, there's this guy, the T one, two, three. He's somebody I rated at random one time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he came back to my stream and ended up just sticking around. This dude just comes out around for my stuff all the time. He's actually became a tier two um founders club member for my patreon last night so wow this guy has been he's one of the first people that said hey you know i'd like to be a part of this and i made him a character he's been through two almost two years of fucking character development and at this point this guy has because of how i write he's like the longest reigning champion in two different divisions and his stories are just like when he comes out now he gets respect from the chat. It's fucking cool to see because I don't even have to tell people who he is anymore. It's like, 
they just there's people that immediately when the T shows up, they know, oh fuck, it's the T. Oh God. Yeah. Cause he's like a tough guy. He's like a biker. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he comes right. out and kicks fucking ass and he just destroys people. I fucking love that so much, man. And that's my favorite character because like and he, he's probably one of my top choices to someday because I I keep my world championship very guarded. Like um it's real like real wrestlers who always have it like my you know i don't put my wrestler in this thing over all the time like he's not always winning all the just you know like it's i make the world championship like it's hard as fuck to get like and it really yeah. is and for a created wrestler like somebody i make in this game it's like good fucking luck and typically they get trashed every time they try yeah but mm -hmm. the t someday i think will probably be my first pick to hold the world championship which hell yeah yeah so that's yeah. awesome um this is a question for everybody uh who did you look up to growing up hmm that's easy for me okay let it rip uh my two uncles okay that's a great answer yeah some strong mustaches in that group <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> i would say for me a lot of my uh, a lot of my family, so like my parents, my grandparents, and then my aunt and uncle, just like all as a whole, you know, we all, and my cousins, we all got together pretty frequently, even though my aunt and uncle and cousins live in Michigan. Um, but whenever they were around, it was always, you know, it was always nice. I would say them, you know, just my family figures. I'm with you. Um, I think literally probably my dad, but, uh, in terms of like public figures, like trying to emulate folks, Teddy Bursky for me. Cause I kind of looked like him when I was little. Um, and I played linebacker. That's why, I, um, I try, I could never be number 54 cause I was always too fat. I had, and I was a lineman, so I had to pick lineman numbers, but, uh, <laughs> in football. <laughs> and then, uh, when I got to high school, I tried to pick 54, uh, but, someone else had it. So that's why I ended up with 51 and that's I'm Nick Vern 51 on everything now. But, um, I was, I was striving, you know, striving to, to be the same number as Teddy Bruschi, but, um, also in paintball, Oliver Lang, I had like his poster, a couple posters on my wall and stuff. And I tried to play like that guy in terms of like public figures, but, uh, DL smooth. Oh, ass. Wait, Stone Dog didn't oh my answer. God. I'm sorry. I can't. Wow. Do I mean, like I gotta say Michael Jordan, if anybody, I mean like my dad's that's sure. Great. When I was a kid, but it had to be because I had every poster on my wall and knew the whole teams and all that. <laughs> that's a Hell great yeah. one. That's a, that's an awesome answer. I got nervous. Yes, uh, uh, I got embarrassed about my dorky paintball uh, pick, but <laughs> so I want to just move on quickly. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to cut you off. You're fine. Um, DL Smooth asks, if you could start your own business, what would it be called and why? <laughs> well, uh yeah, go ahead. You go. Uh, I don't have an answer yet. I guess so. I do have my own business. But you have a couple. My, you've had a couple. Yeah, yeah. But like, but I would say that if I could go back, like, no, no, I would never do it. But like, my dream company name was Bent Nail Construction. That's, That's pretty a good funny. One. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, nobody would hire you if your name is Bent Nail. Oh, I think that's pretty funny. Know. Surprised. I feel like that's pretty clever. It's like drippy paint. I feel like painting or something. I the don't minute know. Yeah. you can sell hot wings with joints, you're fucking golden. And I don't know why that doesn't happen. But the minute that you point. can fucking do just all you do is make hot wings, French fries, and joints. What you want? We got pre <laughs> we got pre rolls, and we got hot wings, and we got, we got some, French some fries. fries. What you want. And dude, I guarantee you, you will make goddamn money. Hand over fist. <laughs> could you Just call Jesus it Christ. like hot box and hot wings or like, dude, you can, I get, okay. So like I'm that? not going to, I'm literally not going to tell you guys an idea that my kid came up with because me and my wife really, if we have money, we want to do it. He came okay. up with an idea one day for a fucking restaurant. That's in fucking sane. That's awesome. It, just in the back seat one day. He's like, Hey, it should be called this. And then we should have this there. And I'm like, what the Holy crap! This kid's a genius. <laughs> yeah, this will be your future. <laughs> That's but no, a great I mean, idea. I don't have money for it, but if I had money to invest in it, I'm telling you, dude, the marijuana industry—not five years from now, right now, 
Right now is like the last minute you can get into this and make a bunch of money. If I had the money, I would mm-hmm. fucking get into it. Actually, yep. you know, you know, speaking of weed, um, in our area, I was reading an article in the newspaper because I was waiting in line for my coffee and like where my shop is. And it was talking about how cannabis right now is down like 30 percent in price. Yeah. Like, unless, some, some like so. Sales. So like there's like the dispensary, like that's the main dispensary in our area. That is like the most popular and they haven't lowered their prices. But if you go outside of that one p- building, you get stuff super cheap. They, yeah. Like you, the prices are down so much because there's so many places to go now. Right. The market has been, you know, it crashed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the that's crazy. Thing. It's it's also like it took time to even out because whenever it became legal, like in Missouri, like I, I have my card where I live. I've had yeah. it for like over a year now. Yeah. Um, it just took a little bit of time for them to kind of get used to it. And that's what they told us. They were like, listen, it's going to go down in price. And now, dude, I pay less tax. Not only that, I get more allotment and I fucking get stuff cheaper than even what rec gets charged. Cause rec just got approved where I live as well. So it's really fucking nice for me, dude. I'm paying, I'm telling you right now, I've been smoking weed for since I was 20 years old. Probably mm-hmm. every fucking day. And I don't get baked all the time. Like I just I just smoke a little bit. Fucking kind of just keeps me regulated, whatever. Like yeah, when yeah. I have time and when I can chill. But I am paying less now for like than what I did on the street, which is crazy. That's crazy oh, yeah. to me. That's that wild. crazy. For stuff that's really good. I mean stuff that will knock you on your fucking ass. It's <laughs> insane. Yeah. Dude. Too strong for me. Yeah. I need, I need like right. the <laughs> the baby the baby i was in, uh i drove Girl through st Scout louis cookies. and then my sister lives yeah. in kansas city yeah i just drove through there nice. oh dude i mean that's most that's mostly what you want to do don't fucking stop it's, there's nothing <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> keep sweet. on driving i mean i mean and, and also there's east st louis and there's st louis and don't go to east st louis i mean just don't yeah, that's yeah. Fair. stop there don't there you go, go. There. unless you have, unless you're strapped and have a reason to be there yeah, I think I probably would stop in that, even in that uh, case. So Sobe asks, this is quick for all of us, uh, Steve, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock? Oh, the Rock. why you got a dead is not fucking cool. Who said that? Who asked Sobe, that? Sobe. Sobe. You tell them that that's rude first off. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, man. That's a, that's a hard choice. It's, I like them both. It's no relatively it's just, easy for me. Me too. Go ahead. Atrix picks neither. Oh, I thought you were going to say neither. Um, I enjoy The Rock's movies more than <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin. So, no. Funny story about Atrix, okay? Okay. Um, okay. Oh, Atrix are and I are friends, and the reason why, really, and we've talked about it before, me and Atrix, we don't like the same things, really. We don't really have a tremendous amount in common, but what we do have in common is that we're very good at just being like, He's way better than me, but just being like, I don't, yeah, I don't dig this. This is enough for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's so, he says, Atrex says that a lot. He's honest, show. but he's a, but he's a good friend. He's a real fucking person. And I yeah. really appreciate that. So, if, for example, though, I had a, like, one night I had a wrestling show and I got this raid and I had like 50 something people with me. Okay. And I'm like, yeah. Atrex is streaming. I'm a fucking raid Atrex. So I raid Atrex with all these people who love wrestling. And the first thing he says <laughs> is, Hey guys, honestly, you know, I Stone Dog does the wrestling show. He's like, honestly, not a fan, not a fan at all. Don't get it. I I I understand Stone has production in his, I, in his show, but I hate wrestling. So and I much. watch his view count just go down and down and down, and I'm like, oh my god, my whole Discord's with me, like chatting with me, and they're like, oh my god, did he just say? It? I'm like, yeah, he said this. So I wasn't mad at him, but like I fucking. That's but fantastic. I remember that call that night. You're like, hey man, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> what he said was really stupid. Yeah, and we're friends uh, enough we can do that though. Like you know, it yeah. wasn't being a jerk. It was just like I was like, "Hey, Trex, no, no, <laughs> yeah." Just oh, to work out. Plummet. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> one of my streaming low lights for sure. But oh, dude, when I was a kid, times. it was The Rock. When I was a kid, it was The Rock. As an adult, I still love The Rock, and it's still really hard. But uh, probably Steve Austin because here's uh, just real quick. I hated Steve Austin growing up. Hated him. Okay. 
Okay. Then as an adult a couple years ago, I like him, of course, right? And I look back and he's in all these matches and I fucking – I do like him now. I really love Steve Austin. But I realized when I went on stage like with my bands and stuff, it was always like, what the fuck is up? Everybody get the fuck up. Let's fucking do this. Like you know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. slinging beer, throwing my middle finger up. Like let's fucking get fucked up. We're going to fucking – you know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. fucking Steve Austin, dude. I fucking ripped his gimmick. Like I fucking straight up did. Like that was – so it made me realize that that was his job to make me hate him. I hated him because he was so goddamn good. And right. then not only was he so good, I actually picked up shit from him in my own life. You know what I mean? So Steve Austin gets a lot of respect for me. I, I like Steve Austin. I like the whole beer stick. I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I just – you know what? I just like that he wasn't prim and proper. That's just it. And he still's yeah. not. Yeah. No. There you no. go. Like the rock, the rock might be one of the greatest characters ever created for, for WWF or E whatever, but stone cold was out of the box and he brought like, he was just a generic dude that came in and just flapped his guns. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like the rock was made for acting and wrestling, right? Yeah. Where, Stone Cold just was pulled off the street and he was like, I'm going to be a wrestler and I'm going to be a hillbilly. You know what I mean? And it was great. All right. Sovi st- asks again, Undertaker or Hulk Hogan? Oh, I mean. Uh. Oh, see, I, I read it as the Hulk, as in like Bruce Banner, the Hulk. No, no. no. I was like, Hulk. what? Yeah, okay. So uh, this is, again, easy for me because I'm going to say I can't Same. pick because when the Hulk Hogan is the greatest wrestler of all time, in my opinion, like what he did for wrestling changed wrestling. Like with Andre to the giant and WrestleMania one, when he fucking body slammed that dude, it changed wrestling. A dude picked up like a 600 pound guy and slammed him to the ground or 400 pounds like that. Yeah. Was unbelievable. Giant, right. Knows. Like exactly. But I remember when The Undertaker came out, I was a kid. That dude scared the fuck out of me. (laughs) And that dude's character, and like that's the other thing, is Mark is The Undertaker's name. He was on Joe Rogan podcast. If you want to hear an amazing podcast about wrestling, you should really listen to his episode, The Undertaker, because he'll tell you for the 30 years that he was in wrestling, he never left character to his friends, his family, everything. He was always the undertaker. Wow. Never not. And he said, now he's finding who he is as a person again, because he never came out of character because if he did, you would, um, you'd see it, you'd you'd see it and it wouldn't be able to fake it. Dude. Yeah. March 29th, 1987. Just dude. He fucking up the clip of Hulk Hogan. body slamming. Oh, okay. The yeah. The body, uh, look at this, dude. Jesus, dude. When that shit, yeah, <laughs> that, like, that you can see he legitimately struggled. That guy is humongous. Yes, dude. But he did it. Yeah, that's crazy. Right. Anyway. um, So what about you guys? Undertaker or Hulk Hogan? I'm going to say Undertaker because my brief experience when I was younger with wrestling was I would go over to my friend's house. And one of his favorite games that he enjoyed playing was SmackDown versus Raw 2007. I remember that game. And I very much enjoyed that game, running around hitting people with ladders and sledgehammers and such. Uh, And so Undertaker was definitely one of my favorite characters to play. Obviously, Super Insane, the intro, and all of that. So even though my experience with wrestling is very limited... Uh, and and skewed, I would go with Undertaker for that reason. See, it's tough for me. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with either one, but I will say, um, I'm going to say Hulk Hogan because he's a classic. Yeah. Um, Hulk Hogan's cool. And he's really one of the legends. Undertaker is also a legend. Um, I respect the hell out of the Undertaker. I just, and I'm not saying I wouldn't, you know, pop if I saw him live because I definitely would. But 
Yeah. He's not one of the guys that I was like my absolute favorites. I always did. I've never minded watching an Undertaker match, but I've never really been like super invested in it. Yeah, and I gotcha. So with Hulk Hogan, I got to go because not only the stuff he, that happened when he was younger, um, like just everything. I know a lot of wrestling fans don't like him because they feel like he held other people down and fucking all these politics and shit like that. But like just looking at his body work, I mean, the dude was a part of the WWF when it got big. I mean, going back, I mean, different organizations before that, even like kind of where they gave him the character he was right. But like, right. Went on to WCW reinvented himself and then went back to the WWE and had an amazing WrestleMania match against the rock. And then, and then went on and was in a part of TNA wrestling, which actually believe it or not for like a millisecond, like was going to be possibly a competitor again with WWE. Right. And that was like in the two thousands. So I got to give it to Hulk Hogan there, but I will say that body slam wouldn't have happened if Andre the giant wouldn't have cooperated. And there's a story also behind that to where Andre, like they called him the boss backstage and um, he didn't do anything he didn't want to do. And he was, he would straight up go out there and decide that he wasn't going to lose that night to some people and just not lose. He was known for embarrassing people. If you felt like they were too uppity, him and Hulk wow. Hogan never had a conversation that was like, he never told him how the match was going to like end or if it was really going to happen, if he was going to, what was going to. So that was something Andre like was like, do this. And he let him do it. Boom. And made Hulk Hogan right there. Wow. But he didn't know that was going to fucking happen. Like that it was, that it was really going to happen if he was, he didn't, because Andre had to cooperate with him to make that yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah, clearly yeah. has to jump a little bit. Yeah. Like right. Hulk Hogan was huge, but you know what I'm saying? Like John was, the giant is an enormous. And, and also like in yep. Hulk Hogan, I saw interviews where he says he was nervous because he didn't know. And there was so much respect for Andre that it's not like you were even mad. It was like a rite of passage thing. Either you passed or you didn't. And Andre right. gave him this, the stamp and, I mean, think about what Andre did for Hulk Hogan that day, too. That's yeah. huge, you know? So, yeah. Absolutely. We're talking about it to this day. Right. This is 40 years later. Um, almost 40. What is your favorite wrestling franchise? Franchise. Oh, this is easy for me. Are you talking about, like, company? Or are you talking yeah, about... WWF. Like, okay. yeah, WWE slash F. Yeah, for me. Right now... It's it's AEW, and it's because it's more so because of what I believe it could be than what it is. Okay, it's you know what's funny is a guy, uh, he's a painter. He feels the same way because I asked him. I said, "Oh, you've been watching?" He goes, "He goes, I watch a little bit of WWF, but he goes, really, I'm just watching the other one, the AWE, because he says it's phenomenal." James, yeah. Yeah. It's it's got potential. It's not they're not doing a great job right now with their story. They they had a bunch of shit happen. They got CM Punk to AEW last like for a while and lots of people hate Punk. I ain't here to argue that either. It's just the fact that like for whatever reason like this has all piled up to where the owner of this company has lost a lot of major players and Punk was the million dollar draw. So they're in a rebuild period right now and trying to figure it out, but yeah. again <clears throat> also, my friend Jay Lethal is a part of that company, and I'm pretty sure I saw him on Facebook. I didn't see it tonight, but I'm pretty sure he's a tag team champ now. So that's fucking that's awesome. badass for Jay. Congrats, what night Jay is it on? It's on Fridays and Wednesdays on uh, TNT and TBS. Sweet. AEW. Yep, AEW. There's Dynamite on Wednesdays and Rampage on Fridays. And Sweet. A lot of time, I don't, I, I'll listen to different podcasts and catch recaps more than I get to catch some of this stuff live, but if it's something Jay's doing, I will watch it. And if it's something, what time does it start? It's a uh, seven on Wednesdays, and I think it's eight on Fridays. That's my time though, Central. So nine p.m. Right. Mm -hmm. I have another question for you from Sovi. Sovi had like one, two, three, four, seven questions. Thank Let's you. go, Sovi. Sovi, that is awesome. Um, do you watch high school or college wrestling at all? No. I don't know. No, I no. Either. And not I don't either. I think it's Definitely lame. Not. I just don't watch it. Yeah, I, I I don't. But I do watch a lot of MMA. I, or I should say I watch the UFC almost every event. You I know, watch. I was thinking about that and you pulled up a jujitsu thing. Why don't you go take jujitsu? I like, might join a jujitsu gym. That would be cool. I mean, I, I that would definitely get me in shape, but I'd like to do more traditional 
working out to be less fat. And then Dude, do that. there is no better workout than rolling. Well, I know that. I'm not opposed. You should just do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Completely unrelated. Favorite book or game series? Uh, well, I mean, I already said Halo. Yeah. Favorite book or game? I mean, game series probably f- fall out, I would say. There is, I, although I, I'm liking, I like The Witcher a lot too, though. I will say, The Witcher's good, but I mean, the Halo series has to do it for me because I mean, I just can't deny it. I just really like my community knows. Yeah. They'll be like, "Oh, great, Stone Dog's on a Halo kick again." <laughs> yep, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> we're going deep. What about you, Atrax? So <laughs> I, this is pretty easy, quick for me. Book series is Redwall. There's like a ton of them. Uh, great series, well written. And then for games, technically my favorite series is Tetris because I play it on literally every generation I've ever played video games on. I've played Tetris. That's cool. Uh, my favorite book is Heir to the Empire, Star Wars. Great, um, great choice. And then, ah, so favorite game series now, Destiny. Wow. The story is incredible. Like, and I'm surprised that wasn't Mass Effect. No, like it's taken it. Like the amount of detail that goes into the Destiny story is just incredible. Like I when can, you start watching the lore videos, like I'm talking going deep. Like I feel like the Destiny lore goes deeper than Star Wars. I uh, I think it's pretty close. There's a yeah, but like I've only uh, like, I've is, only is touched like, the tip of that yeah, but iceberg. Like, but people are like nobody talks about the bartender in A New Hope. You know what I mean? In his lore, in one book they did, but in Destiny, every character has a story. It's fucking incredible, the amount of detail that goes into it. Um, Mass Effect, I loved, but the. The, it's just a linear story. You know what I mean? Like there's the, the what happened in the past to cause what's happened currently. And then there's the future content. And then that's it. There's no real like lore following it. Like you watch the Witcher and like the writ lore rich about every fucking person that like is yeah. in the game is insane. Yeah. Like somebody sat at their desk and was like, this guy picking his nose on the side of the road. He's picking his nose because he, you know, yeah, and if you sniff can, some gunpowder and he's trying to get the rest of it out. Right. And if you you can come back later and he'll sell you the gunpowder he got out of his nose. Um <laughs> I I'm choosing to ask the last one for tonight because this is this is a fucking tough question. Yeah. Doritos asks, What would you tell your five year old self to improve where you are now? That's a hard question. Um I have an answer that's a little bit of like a cheat code. So personally, I'm pretty comfortable with where I am. I'm I'm happy with who I am. And I think you don't become a good... like I, I'm comfortable with the person I became because I've gone through challenges. So I actually... I don't really want to correct too many of the like hurdles I've had to climb, if that makes sense. But the cheat code answer is some winning lottery numbers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that didn't even come to my mind <laughs> yeah we're all thinking deep he's just like oh lottery numbers there you go yeah, like, what, what do you guys think? i just like gave myself fucking 500 million dollars for one of the whenever powerball drawing i would say chase gaming more because i'm thinking <laughs> five five-year-old self is 2002 yeah for me so like if if i if i played more if i played more video games because i didn't you know like when i was younger i didn't know that like i was always told you know oh games are just like casual it's it's never going to be a thing it's like they're literally just games but with the internet and streaming and all of that if i had known that was coming and put forth more effort into gaming I think then it would have been, you know, like it, I could have made it more or less. I understand. In the, in the content creation realm, I would have been able to find my niche before it got 
overcrowded and saturated and we are in the state we are today you know like and especially yeah, too i'd warn myself of covid like i would i would definitely tell five year and it'd be tough to tell to five year old me but i'd be like yo 2019 there's <laughs> gonna be <laughs> there's yeah, gonna be a virus coming and a lot of people are gonna be at home on something called the internet when you see that come like yo be prepared make youtube videos because yeah because uh, i naturally <laughs> found youtube and like my parents they also were like oh yo my dad especially yo check out this youtube video son isn't this cool and he made his own kind of so I would definitely say, like, just push the videos and the gaming more. Stone Dog? Um, I would probably say that for a, for a deep, stupid answer, well, not maybe not stupid, but deeper answer, I guess, for me, because where my brain went, is, like, I feel like whenever you grow up and you kind of start doing things you get like passionate about them and i feel like if you mm -hmm. meet certain people they can kind of put a damper on your shit and a yeah. lot of times those people are idiots and a lot of times those are relationships and a lot of times those are whatever so i think what i would say is just like it sounds so cheesy when you actually say it but like seriously be yourself do what you want to do like yeah. if you feel like you should pursue something like take your drive and get good at all these things because you will attract the right people in the end. And if you have someone comes along that tries to change, like not just, you know, change for the better. I'm talking about, you know, somebody that comes and says, Hey, that thing you're doing, well, I want more attention or I want this or that. Like you need to fucking find someone who, you know, not just relationships, but friends, but like my wife, for example, like she, if I tell her I have to do something, it's okay. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just need, you will find these people. And I've also had things where I'll, Hey, I have to do something. And well, why, why are you doing that? I want you to do this or like whatever. Or if it's a friend, Oh, that's lame. Why the fuck are you doing that? Like, that's fucking stupid. That's not get you anywhere. Like, fuck those people. You, right. you, you be yourself and you have confidence that if you keep doing the best you can, that you will surround yourself with people that you can trust and people that want the best for you. And don't, don't sell yourself short on that. That's what I would fucking say. Hell yeah. Totally get it. And Marcus. a five year old would be like, I just want cookies, dude. Shut the fuck up. I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I need to write this down and be like just yeah. like laminate the paper yeah. and be like, hey, don't lose yeah. this. Keep yeah. this with you till you're like twenty five and then and you'll lose it, it five minutes later. Like yeah. you leave and he's just yeah, I would lose it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. A five year old me would probably be like, Mom, can you put this in the box for me? <laughs> Mom, some creepy guys in my basement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus I would tell my five year old self to love more okay I feel like we all forget as we grow up how to love unconditionally yeah I know what you mean like when you're like my son and daughter love me and my wife unconditionally there's no questions at some point in your life you forget that and the world needs more love and i feel like you take that shit for granted every day whether it's your grandma your mom your uncles your sisters your brothers your cousins a friend getting fucking shot killed whatever it is yeah you know what i mean in life you know, people say that when you turn 40, you wake up. I'm awake. I'm turning 40. And like, you realize that like, you know, what's so funny is I sent Nick a YouTube video of a DJ set in the year 2000. I was in yeah. a New York City limelight club. In crispy 480p. In mm -hmm. 480p. You can't even <laughs> fucking see, but you can see it, but you can hear it. And I sent that to him more of like, hey, listen to this because this is what I was listening to. But I was there. But that was 22 years ago. Right. I remember that night. Right. Like, yeah. And my point is. Life is short. Love more. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working, Working Class, Class Nerds. Nerds.